Hello and welcome to a Burkamp Wonderland, an Arsenal podcast. I'm Guna Gimli and tonight my guests are What's fat and has two wheels? It's Danny the GFP. Well, I only, if I, I'm not a bike, am I? I've got four, you fucking idiot. Well, well just the four wheels. If I had I two wheels, think... I'd, spend, I'd be on my side. <laughs> That's actually a very good point. In my, in my stoned brain, I didn't think that a wheelchair would have four wheels. I wonder how you balanced. Oh, in my old days, when I was fit and, and young and, and skillful, I could, I could hop around on two wheels. Now I'm like a tractor on four. Like a, a, a double unicycle. No, that would still be two, you fucking idiot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Next up, our man in Poland, the Lord himself, it's Steve. Hello, Steve. Hello, Gib, how are you doing? Not very well, apparently, according to Danny. Um, I've forgotten how to fucking count. That's what well, he's done. Nothing, nothing fucking new there. All, all I know, Danny, is if I went over to your house, I'd leave you on bricks. Mm, well... He'd put, you need to put him on skis if we were, if he was out here at the moment because it's minus was minus fifteen today. It's currently minus nineteen with wind chill. It's about minus twenty five. So it's a bit lively around the genital area when you're out walking uh, walking to your meetings at work. I can't, I can't even begin to imagine walking around in that cold. I just wouldn't go out. Mm, yeah, unfortunately, my bank manager insists I do. Oh, that's that's actually a very <laughs> good point. Uh, next up, bed sheets and shit haircuts. It's Pirate Chris. Hello, Chris. These Every boots are made week. for walking, and that's Every just what week. they do. I do where, where, who do I report a grievance to in this parish? Where can, uh, I, where can I send? Gimli mm. is the one that deals with that. Yeah. Yeah. Blow it up your own ass. I deal with the complaints. I deal with the complaints. What's your complaint? Uh, you're a cunt. Do you have shit hair, though? Yeah. It's fair enough. It's fair fair Shall enough? we move on? Yeah. I mean, have you had a good week? <laughs> Um, well, I've had better weeks, but yeah, more on that later. Okay. At least That's you haven't good. lost a fucking tooth. <laughs> oh. Yeah, we didn't say. How did how did you lose your tooth, Danny? Oh, Tell us Jesus. A- right, I can do this in 30 seconds. Right. Um, normally when I'm sat down in my chair, my two knees are about six inches apart. I've got arthritis. That messes with all your ligaments and stuff. Now they're two foot apart. Oh, you know, when you get like an Adidas carry bag, you get the strap that goes over your shoulder. I put that over my legs, pull it together, clip it together in the middle to get my legs to come together in the first place. I use a long bit of string with a hoop at one end and hoop at the other, put it through, pull it taut. And as I was holding it in my mouth, the knot in the loop slipped and the whole thing went whack and pulled and snapped my tooth as it fell out forwards. There you go. Your, your, your morning... Your morning routine sounds like a game of screwball scramble. Did, did you say morning? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, it needs five o'clock in the afternoon. The yeah, only thing I do in the morning is go to bed, usually about six o'clock. Bloody minute of my life I'll never get back. <laughs> that is terrible. At least I did it quickly. Uh, we should introduce the final guest tonight. Uh, back by popular last. demand, it's Arsene Wenger's biggest fan. It's Jeff Arsenal. Hello, Jeff. Hey, you go to Gimli. How are you doing, sir? Not too bad. Uh, how is it in... Uh, Sir, Sir Jeff's Parish. All right. Well, you know, it's difficult. I'm just up the road from the, 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 the Stanford Bridge. So I've suffered a little bit this week, to be honest with you. And I had to, I was at the game and I suffered uh, for that whole misery of the 93 minutes or whatever it was. But I'm sure we'll we'll cover that as we go along. It's all your fucking fault, Jeff. You and your yeah. soul. It's always my fault. You know oh, that. No. <laughs> all sod. Uh, we'll start by going over to Danny for a pre-record of all of the scores across the board and a loan watch. Uh, for all of you who don't want to listen to it, it's 11 minutes long and feel free to skip forward. And for those that you do, enjoy. Thank you very much, Mr Gimley. And on with the loan watch. First of all, Jack Wilshere. Jack played the full 90 minutes for Bournemouth away at Everton and they lost 6-3. Wow, what a ding-dong of a game. Jack played with um, next to Arta in the attacking midfield role just behind the striker king and he got an assist, which isn't too bad. I think it's only about his second or third assist of the season. I should just go and have a look. It's his second assist of the season, which is not what we wanted. He hasn't got a single goal, but in a team like that, I'm not sure what you can really expect. Next up, Callum Chambers. Well, he was playing most of the season when Middlesbrough were playing a back three. He was playing as one of the three main centre-backs. Now they've gone back to playing a back four and he's playing at right back. And they went away to Spurs. They lost 1-0 with a last-minute dodgy penalty. Oh, well, never mind. He played the full 90 minutes as usual, which is good because he's recently had an injury. 
Ah, oh, now on to Chupa Chupa Apcom. And look, Gimli's not there to correct me. Ah, oh, that's wonderful. He's gone to Brighton on loan, and uh, they brought him in to get some goals and uh, help them in their promotion push. So last Thursday during the pod, he made his debut. He played the last 27 minutes as they were away at Huddersfield. They lost 3-1. You think, oh dear, that's a bit of an unfortunate start. And he played his second game. They were away at Brentford, and they drew, drew 3-3. And he played the last 25 minutes of that coming on to play up front. Now in that game, I think they were losing 3-1 at one point and then he came on and then it ended up 3-3. So you could kind of say that he made a difference. I didn't see the game, so I don't know. But yeah, a loss and a draw from the first two games. That's not what they're expected. There again, what did we expect? Who knows? Christian Bielik has gone on loan to Birmingham City. The first game he didn't play, he wasn't in the squad. And the second game, they were at home to Fulham. They beat them 1-0, which is quite impressive because Fulham were on a bit of a run there. And he was on the bench and he didn't play. That's all right. Hopefully he'll get a few games soon because he's a really good centre-back. Next up, off to League One, is Stefan Mafidi. Oh, I've had a tooth taken out, so I can't pronounce my F's properly. I sound like a tit. Anyway, they he's gone to Charlton, and they were at home to Fleetwood Town, and they drew 1-1. He was on the bench, didn't get a game, but I expect him to get a few games, hopefully soon, which is the whole point of going on loan. Fingers crossed, eh? All right, next up, dropping down to League Two, is Matt Macy, a really decent goalkeeper. He has gone on loan to Luton Town. They drew 1-1 away at Grimsby Town. And again, he was on the bench. Being a goalkeeper is much harder to get a game, as we found out with a couple of the players that have been on loan in recent seasons. They haven't really done much. I think they just get them there to be back up and uh, yeah, should get some decent experience from that loan. Next up is Mark Bowler. He's a left back and we've let him go on loan to Notts County in League 2. And he, he actually played a game, which is really good. He came on for their centre-back after 53 minutes, but they ended up losing 2-0 away at Accrington Stanley. But at least he got some game time, but that might have only been because their, their player got injured. So he either, he either played at centre-back or one of the players moved and he went to left-back. It doesn't really say on transfer market. Still in League 2, we've got young player Caelan Hines. He came on for the last 12 minutes, replacing their player who was playing in the Thea Walcott kind of role for... What team is he on loan at? Oh, Stevenage. And they went away to Crawley Town and beat him 2-1. So, good start for him, 12 minutes. Got to be good. Off to Italy now with Chesney. He played as his team Roma, beat Fiorentina 4-0, kept another clean sheet. That's got to be good for him. Good luck to him, he's doing well over there. Um, They're not going to win the league title, but never mind. Now to Portugal with Joel Campbell. He's had a decent run of games recently, playing at the left wing. They've uh, won the last few games and they've drawn a few, but they lost 2-1 at home to uh, to FC Porto. And uh, he didn't play because it says here, tear in the abductor muscle. So that sounds painful. No idea when he's going to be back, but I don't think it'll be too soon. Now off to Germany in the second division. We have Takuma Asano playing for VFB Stuttgart. They won 2-0 at home to... Fortuna Dusseldorf maybe just got an F there oh yeah it is Fortuna and uh, he beat them 2-0 and he played in the attacking midfield role doesn't say too clearly where that was but yeah he's had a re- really decent run of form just before the, the break he had uh, one goal and three assists in the last three games and uh, then they lost one and then they, they won another one away at St. Saint- Pauli so he's doing really well there it's good I always thought he was a striker but it seems he is more of a winger midfielder now, good news for Super Super John Turrell. He's up playing for Rangers in the Scottish Premier Division. And they drew 1-1 at home to Ross County. That doesn't sound too good, but he played in central midfield. He got his first assist. His green assist? Yeah, green is assist. And he got an 85th minute booking. So, really good for him. And he, he's playing regularly, which is the most important thing in a, in a well, take out Celtic, who are a million points clear. That is a half-decent league, as we saw for Zellalem last season. Oh, there's nobody here to say, no, 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 no. So I'll have to say it, as you were. Here we go, Mr. Unpronounceable himself, Julio Pegla Wegla Zili Willy Willy Wo. He's uh, he played the last two games, I think. Yeah, that was a bit of a miracle. He, he got uh, I think two minutes in one and sixty one minutes in the one before that, the one after that. They played away at Real Oviedo. He was on the bench. They lost two one. Bit of a pointless loan. Now on to a bit of an obscure loan. This is uh, Ismail Benica. He's gone to French second division team FC Tours. And uh, he's a bit he's a midfielder, I think. And the two games that he's been at the club for, they drew 1-1 away at Reims. And then they lost 3-0 at home to SC Amines. Oh, jeez, Chris is going to hear that. and be having kittens. And it's really hard to find out any kind of information on the transfer market. But it looks like he didn't play in either of the games. But whether he's on the bench or not, no one will ever know. Now we go off to sunny Holland, and there's about a million players we've got on loan there. Super Super Dan Crowley is playing for Go Ahead Eagles, rock bottom of the Eredivisie. Planned, uh, they went away to NEC Nimogen, 
Nidge, Nidge Medjin. Oh, fucking hell. And uh, he played attacking midfield. And they won 2-1. Still rock bottom, but they're only a few points now away from being out of the relegation zone. So fingers crossed. But he, I think he played 70, yeah. He came off after 71 minutes, which is good because he's now played uh, four games in a row. He uh, came on on the 76th and the, the last few games he's played 89, 68 and 71 minutes. Now that's the kind of loan we like. Plenty of games. And hopefully he'll be able to turn the season around for them. Now we go to the second division in Holland with MVV. We've got a couple of players on loan there. We've got Kalichi, Nawaki, and Wakili. Nawakali. Oh, for fuck's sake. And Stefan O'Connor. Stefan O'Connor has played fuck all games all season. It looks like he's never going to get a game. But Kalichi is doing really, really well. They won 3 0 away at FC Oss. He played attacking midfield and he played the full 90 minutes, which is good because just looking back at these figures, that is now three, six, seven games in a row he's played the full 90 minutes fantastic loan and I think they're second or third in that division still in the Dutch second division we have Tafari Moore he's played a cut his team have played a couple of games he's playing for Utrecht but he's playing within the second division with their under 21 team they played on the 3rd of February he wasn't involved they lost 2-0 at home to PSV under 21s and the 6th of February he was actually involved in a game which is nice they went away to Walwick and they beat them 2-1. He played right back and he come on in the 76th minute so played 14 minutes. It's been a bit of a dodgy loan for him. He's he's getting games but they're just sporadically. Since the beginning of November he's had 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 full 90 minutes so it's not too bad I suppose. I don't think he's got much of a future at the club. Here he is, the man we've all been waiting for, Gideon Zelalem. All together now. Oh, I'm on my own aren't I? Anyway, he is now at VVV Venlo, who are uh, top of the Dutch second division. And the first game that he was there, he came on and played 15 minutes in the attacking midfield role. They beat De Grafschap 4-1. And then on the 6th of February, they were... Were they away? Oh, they were away to PSV under 21s. They lost 2-1 and he was on the bench so didn't get a game. But in that division, it doesn't matter about the the uh, like PSV under 21s because they won't get promoted. So it always works around them because they like to have their youth teams like PSV under 21s. They play in the division below. Now we're going down to the Dutch fourth division. Who even knew there was such a thing? This is a horrendous fucking move for a young Arsenal player. Aaron Iomia. He's gone to play for FC Volendam under 21s he is at the moment. I think he's gone to the parent club, but then he's uh, gone down to play for the under 21s. And they lost 4-2 away at Harke Mass Boys. And he was on the bench. I mean, if you can't even make it off of the bench when you're playing in the Dutch 4th Division, then, you know, it's time to give up playing football and become a postman. Right, that's the the loans all done. So now what we've got to do is look at the injuries. Mr Hector Bellerin, it says, head, non-specific, four days lost, unknown when he'll be back. Aaron Ramsey, eight days lost, calf strain, due back any day. Uh, Lucas Perez, he's been out five days, ankle injury, non-specific, back any day. And Santi Cathola, the quietest feet in football been out for 112 days and it's Achilles I reckon a couple of weeks but you know just put whatever number you want in front of that and maybe back then who knows poor bloke we do miss him come back well Santi the under 18s on Saturday went away to Fulham under 18s and they lost 3-2 uh, we scored an own goal which put them 1-0 up we scored in the last uh, in the 58th minute with Fortune and then Coyle got one in the 78th minute so 3-2 loss Shit. But even with that loss, it still means we're fourth, which is uh, in the championship round, first to fourth championship round, fifth to seventh of the middle playoff, and ninth to twelfth of the bottom playoff. We're only two points behind West Ham in third, but running away with that league is Chelsea under 18s with 43 points, so eight points clear of Reading in third, with a goal difference of plus 28. Bloody hell. But they have all the players, and with so many players of ours out on loan, it's really affecting the under 18s and the under 23s. A lot of shuffling around, so I'm not expecting too much. Well, not that I know. And the under 23s on Monday, um, they went away to Everton, who I think they beat us 5 0 or 6 0 when they came to our place earlier in the season. We lost 1 0 with an 86th minute goal, but just looking at the team line up, we had Martinez in goal, Corporal Jenkinson at right back. Uh, seen any other ones? You had uh, Malin and Dragomir and Willock all playing up front. But other than that, it even says it had substitute number 16, Mark Bowler. Unless there's two bowlers at the club, how could he be there when he's bloody playing in, where's he, Notts County? Oh, it's a disaster. 
and just quickly for the ladies, it says their next fixture is against Notts County Ladies. We're at home on Sunday the 23rd of April. So, a bit of a wait. And that, that league's already ruined by the likes of Chelsea, Liverpool and Man City treating it like the men's game and buying everybody. So, we've got a few players in, but I don't know how to hold out much hope. It's not going to be like the old days where we do doubles and triples every season. Money has ruined it. Oh, and that's it. That's me done. Bloody hell, how long was that? Well, I'll edit this and then I'll, uh, I'll, I shall say during the live show how far you need to fast forward so you don't have to listen to it. Thank you very much. And back to you, Mr. Gimley. We'll carry on the show by talking about our 3-1 away defeat to Chelsea in the league. Uh, for all of his thoughts on this game, we'll start with Chris. Oh, God. Really? Yes, Thanks. you. OK. When I uh, edit this, Chris, do you want me to, to slowly play the music of the da 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 as you start to talk? That'd bring out your dad. <laughs> um, well, it wasn't very good, was it? <laughs> be, well spotted. Be, you can see why you're on, an expert. Yeah, absolutely. Fuck me, we'll have you back next week. Woohoo! Um, what was that, what, that filming where they paraded shamed women through the streets naked with shaved heads? It, it, that match was a bit like that, really. You're, you're watching the wrong porn, Steve. We need to sort this out. That's, yeah, that's Dan, just... let Danny that, 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 was, that, was, that was John Welsh that recommended that. I think it's <laughs> funny, that. <laughs> Crabs Ahoy or something like that. <laughs> um, where do we begin? Where do we begin with Saturday? I suppose at the start. Um, at the end and move on. Yeah, I mean, it was just it was just awful, wasn't it? From start to finish, there was sense of inevitability about it, which I know we'll touch on. Um, I'm sighing even saying this, Jesus. But I think we all wanted a reaction from the Watford game. We didn't really get it. Um, that was probably the, the, the biggest concern about everything. It, it was almost like the players sort of expected, well, we can't play that badly again. We'll turn up and we'll be all right. I suppose the weird thing about the whole game is that we didn't start that badly. I didn't think, you know, we weren't, we weren't, uh, I mean, particularly on the back foot. We were, we're taking the game to them, had a, a couple of spells of possession early on. Um, and so I read an interesting, uh, interesting fact earlier on that the side that we put out, a lot of people have you know, criticized it is exactly the same side by Santi that we played when we beat them 3-0. So I don't think there was anything wrong with the lineup as, as such. Um, obviously things changed on, on the first goal, but I didn't think we were particularly terrible. Um, I, I wasn't really sure when we decided to go with this sort of 4-3-3 formation. It's ironic, really. Do you not that think that our defence was terrible on the day, though, Chris? It you was. said there that you don't think, but I mean, the first goal, they were shit. And yeah. the Hazard's goal, they were just equally as shit. All oh, of them. Of and it's not just yeah. the defence, it was all of them. Yeah, yeah, of course. I mean, you know, the, the Hazard goal was, as much as I don't want to say it, credit where credit's due, it was a very, very good run and a very good finish, but we didn't exactly make it hard for him. Um, and, well, you know... Co- Cochlin escorted him to the fucking box so he'd have a shoe. <laughs> he did. Stupid I... fucking prick. Take a book I... in your cunt, break his legs. I said imagine, on the radio... imagine, imagine, imagine Paddy Vieira trying to let someone go through like that. He'd have fucking cleaned him out, wouldn't he? Are you going to make yeah. yeah. Peter Story or Brian Talbot? They'd have taken him out. <laughs> Fucking neck downward. He'd be, he'd be wheeling himself around fucking Fulham now. Does does have to be said though? Cockerlan is not the only one because uh, I've seen I've seen a lot of, uh, well, in my opinion, rubbish written about Cockerlan this week, and a lot of people. We, we, of course, Aaron Ramsey's out injured now, so we all have to pick on someone else. That's that's the way it works. But you know, he was poor for the goal, and I know what he was trying to do when he steps across. He's trying to do that tackle he does, um, which when it comes off is great. Where you step in front of the player, you take the ball, and then knock the player away at the same time. But you take the ball with you, so you can then pass it off quickly. And obviously, he's off balance; it doesn't work. But Koscielny turning his back was unforgivable. Mustafi sort of runs, I don't really know where he's running, to be honest, the, the wrong way. Um, and uh, is it Gabriel? Where was Monreal? Where was Monreal? Who is it? Who is it who slides in desperately towards the end? It's Mustafi. Mustafi, Mustafi is it? Yeah, I mean, he yeah. kind of throws himself as a bit of a Hail Mary. Because he, he does Koscielny twice. He does, yeah, and and, and Cos has got to got to come across and wipe him out if if Cochrane doesn't. But even even before that stage, you know, the the run where he even picks up the ball, he's unchallenged. There's no pressure on him from he the forward. He picked up. Either. He picked. He picked up the, the ball because Cochrane, instead of passing sideways and being safe, tried to flick po- flick and poke the ball to a player behind Hazard. Hazard just yeah. traps him. Was off. Yeah. And this is even worse. Hazard was ten meters in front of Cock. And before before Mr. Slowbrain 
why am I up the fucking pitch because I can't play football? I should be sat back in front of the back four and even reacted. Hazard had gone past him at fucking 90 mile an hour. If ever there was a place to bring him down, that was it. Because that, that would have been a book him. Touch him in air off, that was a red card. But it's, it, we've been saying this for weeks now, this wandering through the midfield bollocks, which was evident in what against Watford as well. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I, I agree with Steve there. Yeah. The, the, the question that I have here, and, I, and I'll give it to Jeff, um, Hazard takes a ball on the halfway line, he, he dribbles past Koscielny, puts Coquelin on his ass, round Koscielny again, dinks it over Mustafi and past Czech. Jeff, to that, is that to you an unbelievably good goal or exceptionally shit defending? It's a bit of both. You got, I mean, you've got to give credit where credit is due. Uh, as a forward, it was brilliant play by him, the lad. But as a defensive team... Right, as a defensive, uh, to look at it defensively, you've got you, you know you know you know when a player like that gets the ball, he's got plenty of pace. The last thing you want is Eden Hazard running straight down the middle of your pitch. You know you you've got to clean him out. You've got to have the you got to have the nook the nose to to clean him out early so it doesn't look. If you do it any further, that you know twenty yards from goal, you're in trouble. Right, you've got to do it early. You've got to take one for the team and do it early. And we were just so, so naive. And it does, unfortunately, keep on happening. We've got to turn a little bit nasty sometimes. And we, we're not doing that. And that, unfortunately, is the players on the pitch. There's nothing Arsene Wenger can do from the sidelines. You've got to take responsibility. And that particular goal was a nightmare down to the defensive errors. It's as simple as that. Mm, you, no. you wanted him to do what Ander Herrera did um, in a game. Was it against Liverpool? I think it was Firmino turns in the, in the midfield at Old Trafford and he's running away yeah. and Ander Herrera just grabs a handful of his shorts and shirt and just yanks him to the floor. It's the most cynical foul you'll ever see. But he stops it at source in the centre circle. The, the trouble with Coquelin is, yes, he tries that sort of putting his foot and his body in front of the ball. When that fails, you've then got to go to the ground and pull the player down with you. Also, also, stop. as well, I suppose, they, you know, might be in the back of their mind. The last time we did it, when the Chaka, he got sent off. Yeah, that's true, yeah. You know, he, he deliberately, professionally, he just kicked him off the ball, you know, so he tripped him up on the halfway line. He got sent and, off. And no, and no one else since that tackle's been made has got a red card for that. Look That's at right. that tackle that Rodwell did on uh, Saturday for Sunderland. That was Absolutely funny. Absolutely fucking <laughs> ravaged somebody. He didn't even get fucking booked. There's oh, been three was... or four of them like that. Was it the one against the Spurs player? Because I found that quite funny. But it <laughs> was the one that, it was, the... was it Rodwell that, Took a Spurs player out knee high. Yeah, it could have been. Yeah, it well, could have been. I mean, that's excusable, but the rest, I agree. <laughs> um, we should continue. We should go really back to the start rather than talking about the Hazard goal. But we've covered that now. But we will go back to the first initial um, incident, which was the goal and the foul, or if it wasn't a foul, on Bellerin. Danny, we'll go to you. Do you think that that was a foul? I don't know enough about refereeing to decide whether that was a foul or not. All I know is. That was fucking horrible. It was dangerous. At least Arsenal had the sense to take him off. They didn't do what most clubs do and try and leave him on. But it, it's, it's fucking horrendous. Uh, some people said he was jumping backwards. He wasn't. I watched it again today. He was um, went in one direction and he, he slowly moved and he was going in. The, he was walking forwards or trying to run forwards. So he was slightly off balance. But um, the uh, Alonso, who, who, who has had previous when it comes to. Uh, um, the law. I can't say too much about that because I'm not sure what happened, but it wasn't very good. And so he's a bit of a fucking animal. And what he did was wrong. And if that had been an Arsenal player that had done it, I'd have gone, oh, there's no need to do that. There's one thing using your arms to push yourself up in the air, but there's another thing, like, the way that he um, it hit him. So I don't, I'm not referee. I don't know. It wasn't very nice, but um, I've heard so many people whose opinion I, uh, I value, like um, Andrew from Arscast said it definitely was. Chris said it definitely wasn't. And there's um, other, like the, the Guardian were talking about it, the Times were talking about it. Everyone is split on it. So I suppose it comes down to the referee's interpretation. So I don't know what the referees have said, um, but... The guy that does uh, the refereeing decisions at Sky Sports mm. that comes in after the game, he said that it wasn't a foul because both players had their eyes on the ball, not each other. Um, so it was a 50-50 ball. Um, and, and that's what, is, is there anyone on here that disagrees with that and thinks that it was a foul? Yeah, yeah. OK, Steve, uh, we'll go to you. I, I think I, I, I've looked at it frame by frame because I was so incensed by it because what it reminded me of was fashion on Gary Mabbott, where Gary Mabbott nearly lost his eye. When, when you see the first ball in the air, you'll notice that Hector Bellerin's under the ball and he's looking at the ball and he's jumping up for it. 
Alonso's nowhere fucking near the ball. He's never going to make the ball. The only way he's going to make the ball is if he comes in and takes the player. And that's why it's a foul. Because he comes in, and when he comes in, his arms raised up. You can argue, yeah, it's natural to put your arms up and raise. But what? Your arm actually raised up above 90 degrees with your elbow pointing out like a spear aimed at someone's head. He's hit him in the side of the neck. That's, that's dangerous play. You can say, oh, if you could say it wasn't an in, there wasn't intent, it's dangerous play. He's not the player. And what, what pissed me off was the referee and the officials showed no fucking concern whatsoever for Bellerin. He was lying on the floor, completely fucked. Didn't, didn't wave the fucking uh, doctors on or anything. The Chelsea were off being cunts, celebrating. You know, and th- this is something I want to come to later on, this issue in the British game about physicality over everything else. And, oh, he wasn't up for it. You know, Gary, Gary Neville used the word, he's battered him into the ground there. It's football, not fucking boxing. It's not Australian rules football. If you think, if you did that to somebody in the pub, you'd be fucking arrested. The fact you're on a football pitch doesn't make it any less of a fucking crime. That goal should have been... Dis- I'm not saying it would have changed the result because we were shit and we deserved to lose. But, you know, really football authorities have got to start looking at these sort of things because we've got a goalkeeper sat there in the area who's, who's wearing a helmet because he had a fractured skull. What's it going to take? Someone to end up in a wheelchair or be killed because of it or get brain damage? You can't... Elbows up have got no fucking place in the game. And, and, and no surprise, Alan Shearer said it wasn't a foul because he was the biggest fucking dirty bastard with fucking elbows out there ever was. You know, you, you covered a point there, Steve. You're right what you said about um, Alonso had everything. All right, he could see the ball but come off the bar. But Bellerin was in front of him and, and it's in his, eyes, his, his eyesight. He can see exactly where everybody is. And that's why, you know, he had a run and jump. Bellerin, to be honest with you, I believe he could have defended it better. Unfortunately, he was... Ball underneath the ball, <clears throat> and that's how he got cleaned out. But if Bellerin, with a bit more experience, I think if he'd have took a couple of paces towards Alonso, he could have just blocked him, just run and blocked him off so he couldn't even, you know, the ball would have bounced in front of him or something like that. But at the well, end could of the have, day... It could have gone under him and upended him, couldn't it? I think Alonso, yeah, exactly. I think Alonso knew exactly what he was doing. I don't think he meant to elbow him the way he did and knock him spark out. But I think Alonso went up knowing full well that he was going to jump above Bellerin, right? And he, he listen, he was, he, he was determined and he got the ball and it was, it was a good goal by him. He'd done his job, right? But it was dangerous play. Let me put it to you this way. 10 out of 10 times, if that was a goalkeeper, that's a free kick. Absolutely. fucking lootly. And you know what? I've got, I've, I've actually got uh, pre the cross of that goal or frozen on my screen here. And this goal all occurred... Because Victor Moses drew Nacho five yards up the pitch out of position with a man. And he didn't look with a man behind him. So that man that's behind him, who put the cross in, I can't see who it is because it's tiny here, drew Koscielny out of position. So all of a sudden, you've got a huge gap between Koscielny and Mustafi. The ball's coming. Czech saved it. It's rebounded off the bar. But what got me is n- none of the defence bar Bellerin reacted. They all just stood there. You've got Walcott, I think it was jogging back Pe- people in midfield jogging back oh it's not our job to defend it's the defense's job well sorry if you think that you should fucking uh, go and play for fucking Luton Walcott, no pro- Walcott should have been in the position where Alonso was you should have tracked him yeah it, yeah of course he didn't fancy it because it was physical he bottles it every time the other point is is that Walcott should have also been the person going after Victor Moses not leaving it up to fucking Nacho then when he then if that went wrong, then he has to turn and make the space up to go and get in the position to, to track Alonso. Mm, it's just uh, a fucking farce. I think it was a shit show from start to finish. Um, we will talk about the final goal. Um, Chris, we'll go to you. <laughs> I mean, where do I start with it? I mean, I don't even know how to pull it apart. Um, all I can say is that people this week have been questioning whether Petr Cech is still a world-class goalkeeper. Uh, your thoughts on the goal um, and if he is world-class still? Um, no, he's not world class for me. Hasn't been. I don't think he has been ever since we signed him. I'm not saying he wasn't world class because he clearly was. Um, but I don't. I don't feel that we signed a, a world class goalkeeper. I think we signed a goalkeeper who was world class and was better than what we had available in our squad at the time. Um, I think it's it, the the broader point in this is that 
it's a shame that Wojciech Szczesny is is a bit of a prat because anyone that's seen him play for Roma this season, you'd look at it and you go, cool, do you know what? He'd do a job. And um, it's a shame. And I think it's also a shame that, that David Ospina had sort of mixed reports in his first year because I think he would be in by now. I would have him in. Um, you know, the, I think the goal aside, the, the third goal aside on, on Sunday, I thought, I even thought the first goal, um, yes, of course, the, the you know the Bellerin situation would have been uh, when you see a player sort of fall out of the sky like that. Fine, I didn't think Czech made anywhere near enough effort to save that header from Alonso. It's right next to him, and he doesn't. He, he seems to go down very, very slowly. And you know, the, obviously, there's been things brought up about the way we coach goalkeepers. You know, Steve or, or just said, don't or, or don't. Yeah, with with Jerry Payton. I, I wonder if uh, is it Lockie Con, the, the other coach that Czech had. Well, look. Lollichon. Lollichon, that's the badger. I wonder if, if him coming in would have helped. But I, I just think that I think the game is moving on a little bit. In, in, in Ten years ago, maybe 15 years ago, Jeff and Steve would probably know. Um, your goalkeepers, everyone had a goalkeeper who was 32, 34, 36. You know, it, that was when they were in their peak. I think the game's changing a bit now. And barring the odd, the odd exception, you know, the Buffon, for example... I do think that keepers nowadays, you can have a younger keeper as long as they've got a winning mentality, as long as they are a big personality. You know, look at the lad at, at Milan, he's 19, for God's sake. Sorry, 16, for God's sake, 17, whatever he is. Um, you know, I, I don't think that nowadays you need to have a, an older, less mobile goalkeeper. I think you need to have a keeper that is commands his box and is active. And I, I don't ever get the feeling. I think Czech's a brilliant communicator. Um, you know, even at live games, you, you do hear him talking and he is a communicator, but he, he I don't know what it is. He's just lost a step for me. He's lost a, he's lost a bit of the reflexes. Um, and of course, let's not forget, you know, we can't forget he had, it pains me to say it, a brilliant defence in front of him at Chelsea. And, and that would often have hidden some of his, his faults. And I'm not saying he's a bad keeper. Don't get me wrong. But I do feel like it's an area that, that we could upgrade. And, you know, I, I wouldn't be against giving Ospina a few games because I just feel like Czech's at the moment going backwards. And that third goal summed it up. Here's a, here's a terrible question for you. You might see that we've been linked with a goalkeeper today. Um, oh, please, God. No. <laughs> you're not going to ask it. Um, yeah. Joe Hart, Chris. No. No, 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 no. I mean, anybody here would take Joe Hart? No, 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 no. More rubbish that is as well. Look, look at the high, high profile errors he's made. He's been very good at Torino, you know, not, and, and fair play to the guy for going abroad and playing football. You know, when so many players refuse to go abroad, you know, fair play. He's a big character, but you know, we've got a big character in Chesney. Look how that worked out. You know, it, it's it's all very well being England's number one goalkeeper. Well, newsflash: England is shit, um, and they will be shit for a number of years. And I, I think if you're going to have, if you if, you, if you're going to upgrade on Petr Cech, I don't think Joe Hart is an upgrade for me at all. He he, he suits Liverpool because they're upgrading to pretty average keepers. If we're going to upgrade on what was a world class keeper and is still a very good high level goalkeeper, you've got to be looking higher than that. But we're not going to buy a keeper anyway, let's be honest. So I think. Well, where'd you go though, choice. Chris? If if that's you, if you're Arsene Wenger, you've got say thirty million pound to spend. Where'd you put your thirty million pound and on who? Well, I mean, as I say, it's I guess it's hypothetical because he's you know he doesn't feel he needs a goalkeeper, but there's a few. I mean, okay, I'll be I'll be um, I'll be obvious and say there's two in France. I'd look at Stefan Ruffier at Saint Etienne's are going to be the best goalkeeper in Europe at the moment, and um, as is Anthony Lopez at Lyon. So you know, there's two off the bat, but, you know, maybe Jack Butland is another one. If you want to go English, I think he's a very, very good goalkeeper. Who's... Or the kid at Sunderland, which we were after. Jordan Pickford, about yeah. Forster or Southampton? No, he's had a no. terrible season. Ah, you speak to Ross Southampton, fact, he's had an absolutely abysmal season. He's a very good goalkeeper. He's a very good, big presence, but he's another Joe Hart. For every brilliant save he'll make, he'll drop three bollocks in the same game. So, no, I think Steve's got a point. I think Pickford might be one we might look at long term, but I'd like to see more than six months of a keeper before we splash 30 million on him. To be well, honest. there was the thing that we were going to buy him and loan him back. So that would make sense. Yeah. I mean, you wanted to... oh, sorry, Steve, you go. I know you wanted to come on. Right? I mean, the goalkeeper thing, I mean, the goalkeeper thing is, I'm afraid, a manager issue in terms of coaching. Uh, the current coach we've got, Peyton. Uh, used to be Fulham's keeper. He was also a keeper, I think, at Leicester at one point. And I've watched some big match reruns where 
he was in goal. And it's like watching El Munia. Every telltale cock up that Arsenal goalkeepers have got, like windmilling at corners, Morris dancing, uncon- bad distribution, uncontrolled bad throwing out, uh, saving balls but batting it back out into the into the crowd, basically known as doing a Jim Layton. Jeff will be familiar with that phrase. Um, <laughs> they're, they're all patent. Career, they're all Peyton's career tells. They're all his career mistakes. Another one is where he lines the wall up to take a free kick and he lets the wall guard about 80% of the goal. So basically, if the geezer gets it up and over, you're never going to get there in time because the keeper's position way too far over to the side. Czech's done that a few times. Now, I know that when Jens Lehmann came to Arsenal, he went and said, I don't like Peyton. I, I want I want to bring Seth Meyer here. Now, what, I mean, imagine having Seth Meyer as your goalkeeping coach. Guy's a legend. Wenger said no. And uh, Wenger took Peyton from Fulham when Tigana was sacked. Tigana rang him up and said, look, I've got this goalkeeping coach here. He's a lovely bloke. Could do us a favour and give him a job and look after him. And because he's a yes man, Peyton, he don't want to rock the boat. He's got a job there. Tony Roberts, who's an excellent goalkeeping coach, uh, he, he was there. And he was the coach that really brought on Wojciech Szczesny and, and uh, Wukas Fabianski. Now, when Wukas left to go... So Swansea did a big interview in Gazette of Ibalta in Poland. And he actually, they asked him, was there any particular reason, you know, why you're leaving Arsenal? Was it because, you know, you, you're not playing in the league? You, you know, you had that brilliant run in the FA Cup. You saved all the penalties and stuff. And he said, yeah, the one of the reasons that he was leaving, that he wasn't getting the games. But the second thing was he, the coaching, that he felt that he wasn't challenged. Now, I've got to make this very clear. Goalkeeping coaching is not about learning technique. It's, you know, when you get to that stage, it's about keeping the keeper on their toes, reactions-wise, fit-wise. So if you watch any of these videos of Real Madrid where they used to have, uh, what's their legendary keeper's name? I can't remember his name. Chris, help me out here. Sorry, say that again. The the keeper at Real Madrid who left, who was there for years. Casillas. You watch any things of him being trained, and he's like, it's unbelievable. He's almost like he's on a trampoline, you know, down that side, bounce back up off this side, up the corner of goal. It's all about sharpening their reflexes. It's all about positioning. It's it's routines. It's drills. And they need to be physically challenged and pushed to keep them at the top of their peak of their performance. And, and clearly, Peyton wasn't doing that with Fabianski or with Szczesny. Szczesny was asked his opinion. They were in the room at the same time. It was after a Poland game. And Szczesny was a bit diplomatic because he he still was at Arsenal. So he just sort of nodded in agreement on the video, didn't say anything. But but the telling thing is this, is that when Wukash went to Swansea, he took Tony Roberts with him. Tony Roberts left because he knew that he was never going to get the top job there. Uh, he was the one who improved Wojciech. Wojciech went to... Uh, Stensley went went to Roma, where he has made some cock-ups, but he, he has done a lot better. But, you know, to go back to Joe Hart, how many times has Arteta caught Joe Hart not concentrating in the 91st minute when we're playing City and, and, and battered one in from 30 yards? He's done it a couple of times. It's high-profile fuck-ups for England. You know, it's bad enough that Joe Hart's doing that now. Imagine what fucking how hideous it'd be if Peyton gets his hands on him. No, so for me, I think Arsenal need to sort out the goalkeeping coach. And I think, you know, Chris made a very valuable point. If you look at David Seaman, one of the you know, the greatest Arsenal goalkeepers there ever was, fantastic saves. But David would be the first to tell you, he was a great keeper because he had great defenders in front of him. They knew what they were doing. You know, Graham had them linked with a rope to keep him in line so that they all came out for offside. And this is another thing that Chris was saying, oh, you know... Um, Years ago, people had goalkeepers for 33, 34, 36 even. Well, the game has changed, but it's not about keepers need keepers' skills becoming less. What's changed is the balls. You look at the plastic balls, how they move in the air. The balls have been designed so keepers can't be so good. Goals equals TV ratings. That's why Laban was moaning about the balls. Then, then you've had the back pass rule that's been changed. So now keepers have got to play out with their feet. So the style of play has been changed. And in our case, we've got a defence which sometimes has got more holes in it than the fucking Tetley's tea bag. And then you've got people in front of him like Walcott who thinks he's on a fucking Sunday afternoon stroll down Margate Pier. So it, it's no surprise to me that you see goalkeepers making bad judgments and panicking and not trusting defenders and making mistakes. And, you know, the third goal, it's just one of them things. And I I remember Bob Wilson saying something once. He said that you can be a great goalkeeper for 30 games. The one cock-up you make 
is the one cock up you'll you'll be held responsible for for the rest of your life because you're a keeper and it always costs. Mm. Just like uh, David Seaman, one of arguably the greatest goalkeeper the world has ever seen, yet a lot I... of people will remember him for that goal against uh, well, the goal with Man United gigs. Yeah. Or, or the naive goal from the halfway line. Yeah. 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 There's, there's another point. There's someone else who actually refused to take part in goalkeeping coaching. Didn't say why, but I've got a good idea why. Peyton Place. It's just mm. it's just a worry, isn't it, with Jack? He just looks like... Uh, uh, maybe I'm being a bit harsh, I don't know, but he, he looks a little bit like an old man. Do you know what I mean by that? Like the way he moves and just... I don't know. Uh, maybe I'm being harsh, but... I'd be interested to know what Jeff thinks as well on this well, one. Well, <clears throat> unfortunately, he, he doesn't seem to be saving a lot. I mean, he hasn't saved a penalty for fucking ages. Um, and even some of the shots. Now, listen, he's obviously, he's still, a, he's still a fantastic goalkeeper. There's no doubt about that. He's still a good goalkeeper, right? But you do, sometimes they just go over the hill, don't they? And, and I'm not sure he is, at the moment, currently the best goalkeeper at Arsenal. I would definitely give uh, David Ospina a go, just to just to freshen it up and give him a chance, and let check to sit on the light, sidelines for a game or two, and just to you know to to ask himself questions whether he could do better or not because there are some sometimes in games and I've seen in, he should be stopping shots and he doesn't really do that anymore, um, he, he, but. I still do still think he's a top quality goalkeeper. I think we've, we've still got two, uh, three good quality goalkeepers. But I, I would, that's only my, in my heart, I just think we should give Espina a little go and see how he gets on. Because I remember before Chet came, the season before Chet came, Espina had a, had a really good season. You know, he, I think he, he, his last 16 games or something like that he covered. And he's he, he, he done he's a been, great job for us. He's been quite impressive in the Champions League games he's played in as well yeah, in the groups. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, true. So, you know, I think he's, he's he's been patient. He's sat on the sidelines. Otherwise, we'll have the same thing all over again. We'll come to uh, pre-season and they'll want to go, won't it? Uh, and there, must, yep. there must be a reason why Ospina decided to stay, knowing that he was, because he left Nice because he wasn't, um, you know, he wanted to play at a higher level. And uh, there must be a reason why he agreed to stay and be number two, because he obviously believes in his head that he can get that place uh, off check. I know a goalkeeper should believe that, but I think he genuinely thinks, well, I can get this place. So mm. be interesting mm. to see how he does against Bayern because obviously that'll be quite the test in, in the Champions League, which mm. he will play. So, Danny, I want to come over to you next because you've been very, very quiet. I've been getting the, the um, web page done. It wasn't an Ozil watch, was it? Be very, uh, yes. very bored. Uh, uh, Ozil, nothing. No, nothing. Just fuck all, that's what it says. M- fuck all. M-I-A. Uh, yeah, the question again. for you. We beat them 3-0 at home and we lost 3-1 away. Yeah. Uh, How can Arsenal be that much worse in what is only a matter of months? What changed? Well, they were up for it. Oh, no, they weren't. No, they were down for it. Oh, no. No, they're up for it again. No, they're down for it again. Fuck knows. Who really knows? It's uh, it's it's we were on their fantastic run of form, weren't we? Seven clean sheets in eight games. Uh, Walcott and Ozil and Sanchez and uh, the Ox all banging in goals. They all looked like they were, they were on record to break all of their goal scoring records. Then you know, things are kind of ground to a halt. We've got no Santi pulling the strings in midfield. Mustafi hasn't been the same since he's come back from his injury. It was probably not the whole team the way that Bellerin got injured. I mean, he's he's, he's been in and out of the team for the last few um games because of uh, whatever he's his Alice band needed tightening but it's got that's something that not many people have talked about the fact that when you see one of your teammates go down like that and I mean it looked like he was dead at one point then and that's got to shake you up and uh, all, all these other things and check check actually pulled off two or three really good saves or I'm gonna say definitely pulled off two sniffling I can hear sniffling which one of you is it it's you Steve stop it mute yourself oh, bad man um yeah, and Coughlin was just—he's got no confidence at the moment, has he? He lost his confidence because he was meant to be—he was sent upfield, and everybody. I mean, so I mentioned this on Twitter the other day. I said, "Why is Coughlin been sent upfield?" And someone had wrote a blog about it, explaining that why he was really good playing upfield, and that's what Wenger had asked him to do, and that, that it was the right thing to do. I didn't even bother reading it. I just uh, marked it off as bullshit because that's not 
his job is he only has one job that's to kick people and he showed in that game when he only had the one job he he was sent spinning like like a like a catherine wheel and it was just a, just a, a really horrible thing to see there's just there's no self belief in the whole team it looks like they have a bit of a build up to it and they go oh yeah I'm going to get oh no it's all gone wrong again and then th- then they just lose faith in in their ability meanwhile everyone else make the most of it plus the fact that chelsea have gone to playing three at the back and uh, they've uh, they're just playing fantastically. I mean, Alonso is is a revelation playing at wing back. Wing back, considering I know on one of the on one of the pods I heard over the weekend they said that he played for Sunderland. I'm sure he played for Bolton. Did he play for Bolton, Chris? Sorry, I was on mute. Yes, he did. And Fiorentina. <laughs> ah, there is Bolton. He played for over here. And Hazard was um East on. Did he? Oh, he did play for Sunderland. Yeah, on loan. Yeah. Oh right. Okay. Yeah, but I always knew him as a Bolton player. I couldn't, they sold him for about two or three million, and then Chelsea paid a fortune for him. But in this game, you think if you'd have looked at that, you'd gone, "Oh well, Costa's going to have a great game. He hit the bar. Pedro's going to have a great game. He only got an octa of seven point four. Got taken off. Um, Kante. I mean, they gave him an octa rating of six point nine here. I thought he was fantastic. Matic in the midfield was domineering as usual. But it all comes down to one bloke, really. Apart from Courtois being really, really good, but it comes down to Hazard. He was oh, Hazard. He was just, it was just immense. Everything he did was just perfect. And when you're playing a team against a team like us with no confidence, this, I mean, first of all, we lost to Watford, and people forget that Watford, the team that knocked us out of the FA Cup last season, and and but, uh, Troy Deeney scored a goal then as well. We're just, we're just on our asses at the moment. Something needs to go right, and then we'll be in a bit of a run at the moment. But we tend to go through this every season. We'll go through a patch of three, four, five games where we'll we'll only get a draw or we'll get one win, and the rest will be losses. And then no, I read I read a tweet somewhere saying that Wenger didn't even give him a bollocking after the game. Well, there you go. No, that, that's, that's problem that's... number one. To be that's, honest that's with you, I, I, I watched I watched the game. I watched the game. Obviously, I watched it live, and I watched it when I got home because I do like to go through and dissect it, you know, and try and work out. But I, to, to, I don't think we was was that bad for the first twenty five minutes or something like that. And to be honest with you, it could have been totally different. We had three guilt edge chances that we should have really stuck away. Um, and the, the Gabriel I'm, one, Jeff, he should Gabriel, have put that. Yeah, yeah. He should, should have been a goal. Mustafi should have scored. I, yeah, anywhere well. other than the keeper, and that's a goal. You look yeah, at the shots on goal. goal. They had six on goal, and we had five. So it was yeah. close like that. Yeah, but we was even the, even the passages of play. It's only when obviously, you know, you, you, you're one or two nil down, then you're going to start. You're going to have to open up. You're going to have to start. You, you've got to, you've got to start going forward and try and try and recapture something and, and recover. But I, I, you know, all right, we did get opened up on a number of occasions, but I still don't think we was that bad, mate, honestly. And you're playing against a very, very good Chelsea team. The top of the league, they're running away, but they're going to win it by 20 points, by the way, I think. And, you know, they're just a, they're just a good side, that Chelsea. Uh, and like you said, we, this is the same team that we beat 3-0 only a few months back. I don't know how many times they've been beat since. Is it once? I'm not sure. And I know Spurs beat them two um, two nil or two one. I think there maybe might have been one other, but I think that was maybe is the only one. But I mean, the outrage again is just you know. But you've got to remember we we played against a a, a team full of champions. They've already you know they won the league two years ago. Um, It's a fucking disgrace how they turned out last year, really, because it's the same team, isn't it, more or less? You know, and they just swallowed it last year. Obviously, all down to Mourinho. but I don't. I don't think we was that bad. We're just going to have to pick ourselves up and 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 just um, crack away again because I think we can, we can recover. Uh, I think first is out of question now. I don't think we can win the league. You know, to be honest with you, though, I didn't think we. I honestly didn't think we would win it at the start of the season. I still think it's very very difficult for Arsenal to win the league. I really do. Gimli, looking at and, the total number of shots, they had thirteen. We had nine. The top five shots on goal, Costa, Alonso, both had three. Moses and Hazard had two. Our top was Coquelin with two. <laughs> why is why is he our best player, our most number of shots at goal with two? And he has never scored in his life, and it's, he will never, ever score a goal. It's, it's ridiculous. It's, it's miserable is what it is. Uh, Steve, I want to go to you next. Uh, there were more Wenger out banners at the final whistle. Is that a surprise to you? Listen, people have got, have got opinions. They've got a right to hold them. Young bloke who held up that banner has been going home and away for quite a few seasons. Spent a lot of his own money following the club. And as a supporter, an Arsenal fan, he's entitled to, to have his view. Now, 
know, Gary Neville's come out and said he's an idiot, but then Gary Neville's gone on to actually say that the media have got no right to decide Arsene Wenger's fate, and he's defended Arsene Wenger, and he's actually you know pointed out why. Um, I'm not really interested in the feud between Arsenal fans. What I'm disgusted at is the British media and the dregs of the cesspit of British football crawling out the woodwork in, 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 in their droves to criticise Arsene Wenger, a slag Arsenal football club. And, and, and that little fucking sweaty sock chaff cunt Craig Burley cunting off Arsenal fans. Arsenal fans who sat there for 10 years giving the manager a benefit of a doubt whether he had money or not. There's a debate about that. But they've sat there on their hands and they've supported their club through thick and thin. And the manager hasn't won the league for 12 years. I don't see, I don't see any fucking uh, huge front page, back page articles about Liverpool not winning the league for 30 years. I don't see anybody cutting Tottenham Hotspur off for 56 years of failure. What I hear is people who have achieved nothing in football, who know a very unintelligent, very inarticulate, yobs, oiks, acting like they're some UKIP rent a racist mob on uh, BBC Question Time, going after Arsene Wenger and going after Arsenal Football Club and the fans. Craig Burley digging at Arsenal fans. Who the fuck are you to comment about Arsenal fans? You won nothing in your career, son. Nothing. The only cup medal you got, you were dropped for the final by Glenn Hurdle because you thought you were a prick. You weren't even on the bench and you got sold the next day. So in effect, you won nothing. And then you played for Scotland. Don't make me fucking laugh. You've got no right to comment. You wouldn't be allowed to clean out the fucking cars at Arsenal. And the fact is, is this. Yes, Arsenal have got prom- problems on the pitch amongst the players and mentality. Maybe they don't like the system they're playing and maybe they don't feel it's right for them. For me, it's a confidence thing and it's a tactical thing. And yes, there's massive issues with the manager. I, I would like to see change. We'll come to that later. But the fact is, is this. We're fourth from the fucking top of the league. We're still in the Champions League in the last 16. We're still in the FA Cup. We haven't lost 10 out of our last 11 games. Why, why, why isn't Klopp being dug out for that? Klopp being dug out for that. We're not fourth from bottom. We are in 17th place out of 22, like we were under Terry Neal. We're not under threat of relegation. So wh- why does it behove Henry Winter, Mr. Fucking Murdoch, I went there for the money, to come out and, and, and dig Wenger out? What has Winter ever achieved apart from getting a big move to the Times for cash? Now, a lot, for me, a lot of this attack on Wenger is, and from the people it's coming from, is it's because he rubbed their noses in the shit when he came to Britain. The, the the white man's club of football run by a load of unaccountable granddads in the FA. Even the Tory government want, want a reform and kick out because they're, they're stopping changing the Football Association. The people that sat there in silence where all them young lads got abused and did fuck all. The people that did nothing while David Webb was trying to sue them for going deaf, for getting you know injured, heading the ball, and so on and so forth. And all these players who, 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 who were brought up in this Howard Wilkinson... And Clark, the bloke from Wimbledon, the hoof it up to some big geezer at the front or jump into the bloke at the front, elbow him and score a goal. Hoof, hoof, half path, work rate, anything but skill, anything but tactics, anything but artistry. And then along comes a, a foreign bloke. And I remember it at the time, Arson who? And then he came over here and did the double. And then they took the piss out of him some more. Ferguson started it. Oh, he comes from Japan. Oh, he speaks foreign languages. I had 10 people. I've got a kid in my youth team that can speak five languages languages, trying to belittle him. Then you had Harry Harris in the press. And on top of that, Arsene Wenger's worn all that. He did, the, he did the double again. And then they made fun of him about his comments about going unbeaten for the season. So he fucking did it. The first team to do it for 100 years. And at the same time, he's had to cope with having to sell his best players. Players leave him because they're cunts. He's got, an, he's got a fucking manager, he's got an owner that doesn't give a fuck about anything but money. Now, whether there was money to spend there or not, or whether Arsene wasted money on Project Youth, it doesn't matter. It's all gone. It's history now. The fact is, is that Arsene Wenger changed, challenged British football, and they don't fucking like it. And that's this is where this is all coming from now. They've jumped on the bandwagon. Part of it is he's challenged their philosophy and wiped, wiped their noses in the shit of their crap philosophy. The same philosophy which has ensured the England team are rubbish and always will be because they can't and won't change. But the second thing of it is, it's all about clicks and attention. They've decided that they've been appointed, the people, 
to get rid of Arsene Wenger, to get rid of managers. Look at what they did to poor Graham Taylor. No, no more better example of what horrible toilet fucking bowl licking horrible scum cunts the British fucking sports press are. They they labelled that man a turnip. They got his kids bullied at school. His wife shattered, abuse shattered at her in the in the supermarket. And then the poor fellas died. And they've come out and said, oh, we didn't mean it. He was a lovely bloke, really. And then you've got that cunt Ashton who writes shit about Ozil, writes shit about Wenger, has a fucking feud with Wenger because he keeps persisting in stupid fucking lines of questioning that Wenger threatens to chuck him out of the fucking press conference. And the next thing we know, he's tipping up where fucking Harry Redknapp is with a birthday cake for him, trying to get him made England manager when the cunt's in fucking court for fucking not paying his tax, allegedly. And then the next week, the, the man who pugs cancer sufferers in the Iron Mourinho is in there sucking his ass off as well at Chelsea, bringing in birthday cakes. And yet he's writing, he's writing articles about Arsenal. He thinks they all think they should come and experience Arsenal Football Club's hospitality, go down there and have beautiful cakes, canapes, sit in the press box, have all their iPads, everything charged up, plugged in. All this information, all this hospitality, and they, and, and they abused our fans and our club like that. You know, this isn't... I'm sorry, Arsenal Football Club aren't like this. We... We have traditions like putting the colours of other clubs on the tables in their boardroom on match days. We do that because we respect our opponents. We do that out of tradition. We, we don't slag people off. We don't abuse people. Yet the press think they've got the right to decide who should be employed and who should not. And Gary Neville, as much as he was a horrible cunt for kicking the shit out of Reyes and a mank twat, was fucking right to stand up for Wenger, but not just for Wenger, for all managers. You know... Look at the people digging Wenger out. Charlie Adam, someone who actually could have been a good footballer if he wasn't a fucking bully. And you just know he's the changing fucking room leader of the person who led the persecution and bullying of fucking uh, younger players. A horrible cunt, a thug who kicks people, a person who fucking chokeholds players. A bloke who's pissed off because Arsenal Twitter robbed him of goal of the season and match. Good. You don't deserve any validation, mate. You're a fucking cunt. Mills, Danny Mills, you got your ass ripped out by Thierry Henry three times at Highbury. You're a shit footballer. He's a fucking world-class player. You never will be and you never were. Get used to it. Stop crying, you fucking little cunt. Craig Burley we've dealt with and all the others. Diego Forlane. Who's next? The bog cleaner at White Hot Lane from 1971 who's got the arsehole because Wenger saw him in Lidl and didn't fucking say hello to him. It's getting fucking ridiculous. It's about time Arsenal put the media in their place. I'll tell you now, if they were treating Alex Ferguson like this, Ashton, the News International, the Sun and the Times, they'd be barred out of Old Trafford and they'd get the fucking hairdryer and told to fuck right off out of it. And that's exactly what Mark Gunnella should do. And I'm not... I'm not defending Arsene Wenger because I love him. I'm defending Arsenal Football Club, our fans. You take on the fucking Ar Ar Arsenal Football Club and the fans, you better be prepared to get a kick up the bollocks, Greg Burley, because you fucking you deserve one. Bravo, Steve. Uh, that was absolutely fantastic. Uh, who wants to follow that then? I I'm going on mute. <laughs> it's definitely going to be a, a, an X rated uh, on, on YouTube or whatever this is, on iTunes, isn't it? I mean, this, 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 this podcast, the amount of seeds that have gone in there. Bless him. <laughs> Just got to get it off your chest. That horrible, utter fucking scumbags, honestly. I think a lot of it's just. That was get attention and clickbait and everything else. So it's want... the Stuart Robson syndrome, as we like to call it. <clears throat> the worst one for me is Chris Sutton. I actually tweeted him last week and said, who of you got pictures fucking a pig from the BBC? That's got to be the only reason why you've got a job there, because you're we shit. Know why he's, you know why he's got a job there. Uh, SAS. The, the, only, the only trophy he ever won was because that old Jackie boy who owned Blackburn Rovers bought the league. Bought the league. And we're talking about a player here with feigned injury at Highbury twice. Got the ball played out, and then they threw the ball back to Sutton, who scored. It's a fucking cheat. And what's he's that? He's a... We do he... know that he won stuff in, in Scotland. We're on about England. Yeah, well, I'm talking about real football, not yeah. playing around. <laughs> um, and let's put something else straight. You know, it's not my fault Chris, Chris Sutton got, got made bankrupt because he wouldn't listen to an accountant and a lawyer. He knew best. That's why he needed a job at Radio 5 Live. So he had to get his old mate, Alan Macho Alpha Malshira, to get him a job there. 
and, and, and he said, and, you know, there's another little problem here. Look at all the cunts coming out of the woodwork, digging everyone out. All fucking northern ponces abused because they think that soft, softy fucking fancy Dan L- Arsenal from down south are fucking foreign and they don't like it up them. And they're pissed off that Arsene Wenger has come to England and done shit and they don't like it. They, they, the Invincibles pissed them off that they had to fucking actually count out to Henri Pires and the lads. Piss them off, because they see Arsenal as foreign. Well, do you know what? Fuck off. Where do we go with that? Um, Maybe we should ask everybody, who's the, the one pundit that they would like to see banned from punditrying ever again? My one at the moment would be Chris Sun. Can't stand him. At least Danny Mills said something nice about Arsenal. Didn't he say he said he would have uh, crawled to Highbury on broken glass to have signed for us or something along those lines? Danny, Ooh, Mur- Danny Murphy's always quite complimentary. Yeah. In, in a backhanded way. None of them are. Any of them, they should all look at Ian Wright, who's one of the, and, and Gary Neville, two of the best pundits money can buy. And even even uh, some of the old ones, like, I mean, Hanson, he was a bit grumpy, and Lawrenson, but at least they weren't vitriolic and, and mean and nasty and just say stuff to get no, attention. Just, just bitter about 1999. <laughs> the thing is, though, I mean, how can you take criticism from someone like Shearer, who relegated his fucking hometown club? Yeah. And then he thinks he has the right to sit there and, and, and try and school or fucking assess Arsene Wenger's manager. Um, uh, even worse, he's, he's sitting there running the slide rule over uh, Alexis Sanchez and Aguero. And uh, and, uh, and and here's the best one. Hey, oh, Jeff, what you written on this? Who's the fucking <coughs> lad? Who's the lad from Tottenham who played at Nottingham Forest? Uh, the one who is a, a special friend of Ashley Coles. Oh, Jermaine Penis. Um, <laughs> uh, Jermaine Penis... Digging out that that player Jesus, who looks an absolute world class talent, uh, who 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 bods who watch Brazilian football been raving about for years, and uh, and Jermaine Jermaine I won fuck all and I was at Spurs till I got lobbed out because I was crap twice has de- uh, twice has decided that he he may not be very good. Well, it's a bit like asking a fucking London cabbie what he thinks about fucking Grand Prix racing, isn't it really? It's actually not that good. It's actually unfair of London cabbies to be honest. That is. <laughs> he's a good player. I mean, what's he got? Four goals in six games for Brazil. Yeah, yeah, I rate him. He's very good. I mean, he's keeping Aguero out of the team. He's uh, he's the biggest laxative for defenders in the fucking Premier League. That geezer, <laughs> along with Alexis Sanchez. True. So, who does everyone else hate then? If you could have one pundit never to be allowed to do it again, anyone? It's a tough one. There's so many to pick from. <laughs> It's got to be Robson for me, hasn't it? Because I know he's not been around recently, but... Where is he? Michael Owen. Michael Owen's mine. Oh, yeah. That kind of should be I'd nowhere like, near on microphone. No, I'd like to cancel the fucking Liverpool Football Fan Club on BT Sport. All of them. Sack all of them. Uh, and, and, and introduce a government rule that they are not allowed to have any scousers in the match show if Liverpool are ever in a plan. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's ridiculous. Got to be full of ex Man United players instead, get a bit of fair brevity on it. And you wait until Gerard starts doing it or when Rooney retires. Jesus Christ. They're going to need an interpreter and someone who does sign language and subtitles. They're not going to have got them on there as fucking pundits. Rooney BT, be all... They'll have anyone. <sighs> they won't probably won't even have the contract pod. Oh, if they give a job to Rio down. Ferdinand, they'll give a job to anyone. Listen, Rio Ferdinand actually at times on there has some good stuff to say. He might be a bit of a, a lippy, lispy bloke, but I, you know, I've got time for the guy. I think he's uh, he is a genuine guy, and he, you know, does put his hands up when Man United get get bashed. So, and plus, I felt very sorry for him about his missus, the treatment he got on social media. And that was oh, yeah, that's, that's and the bloke still wandering wandering around years later wearing his wedding ring. Fucking hideous that was. Yeah, uh, terrible. Should we, right then, should we, we should move on. Uh, yes, Danny. Oh, I don't really need to uh, make sure to there's do... no one else that Steve wants to call a cunt before we move on, just to make double okay, clear. Okay, Steve. Anyone? Oh, no. I'm sure I'll think of a couple in there. Oh, dear. Okay, go on. Oh, there is one more thing, which is the Arsenal happiness rating for this week. Um, so, as you all know from doing it before, the Arsenal happiness rating out of 10, it could be 9.3, 7.5, whatever you choose. Just tell us how... Arsenal, how happy Arsenal have made us this week, Danny. Oh, I'm going to go a, uh, a. Can I go negative? Can I have an, a negative 72.4? Yeah. 72.4. Negative, yep. Negative. No, I don't think you should be allowed negatives. It should no? just be. No, no. Can I no, have I'm... triple zero? 
No. Double zero? Zero. zero. You can have 0. 0.0. I'll have 0. 0.0 recurring. Okay, wonderful. Uh, Steve? I was going to pick a number similar to the current temperature out here, which would be minus 27. But seeing as I can't, I would have uh, 0.0001. And that's, that's just for... Because look at you Oxlade, kissing their asses. Oxley Oxley Chamberman pleased me by accidentally like, liking a Wenger out tweet at the weekend, which I didn't agree with, but it just made me fucking laugh that he had to come back to. Oh, sorry, I didn't mean it. <laughs> I was amusing. Um, Chris, uh, three point five. What? What have you 3. seen that 5? we haven't seen? Well, three point five. Well, dissect well. this one. I mean, you know, you you gotta you gotta keep some positives, don't you? I mean, it's. And what positives are there? Oh, the uh, Pirates win. Is that why you're the, positive? The, the first. You can't include that. That's no. No, we, we got that. we got rained off, so that's all right. Um, <sighs> uh, first ten minutes, kit looked nice. Sun was out, you know. Yeah. Drew scored. Uh, yeah, you can Did have that. Did you score against Chelsea at their place? Yeah, you can have Bonnet that. The and, and the fact there's another game, you know, a week later, we can put it right. So, you know. Well, against Hull. Well, yeah. I actually Six don't think Hull. we'll win. I actually don't think no. we'll win that game. But no. that's Their story. young manager is an absolute genius. Marco Silva, yeah. yeah. But yeah, 3.5. <laughs> uh, Jeff? Well, me being in the... Nine. I'm the, well, I'm the president of the happy clapping Arsenal supporters club. So um, I'm, a, I'm a four, I think. Jeez, because oh. well, I don't, I don't. I've already said it. I don't think we was that bad. We just, you know, got beat by a better team on the day, and it was all down to circumstances again. That's fair enough. Jim Lee, I'm going to go. Yours? I'm going to go for a zero. Just a zero. I don't think it deserves any more than a zero. Just <laughs> a single zero, like an arsehole. A big, big zero dipped in poop. Yeah, and left like out in the sun. Like a chocolate starfish, Danny. Um, like a zebra's arsehole. You did pre-record the questions, uh, so let's have the best from Twitter this week. Oh, Jesus. Um, yes. Right, where are they? Here they are. People are getting quite crafty now. They're writing it on their phone, screen grabbing it and sending it to me. So uh, a question from Dima Standall. He says, uh, question to Chris specifically. Oh, here we go. My Fs. Don't nobody send anything in with a fur in it until I've bought my new toot. Uh, he says, as someone who watches a lot of European football, how likely are the managers linked to Arsenal likely to come to Arsenal? <sighs> well, it's the million dollar question, all. isn't it? <laughs> Um, well, there's a lot of things that have got to happen before any new managers come to Arsenal. The major one being the manager we currently have has to not be there anymore. So can't we have two? No. Um, although it would be quite good banter if you appointed Allegri as assistant manager, wouldn't it? That'd be quite good banter. Um, no, I mean it's. I, I have a bit of a in no way, shape, or form close to what Steve's rant was because that was truly. I mean, I just sat here and. You know, I was erect listening to that, I've got to be honest. But um, there's an image, boys and girls. But I, I do have a, a mini rant which sort of ties into this, crash, into this question, which is I'm not for a minute saying that if you don't watch a lot of football from around the world, you aren't entitled to an opinion. That would be stupid. Of course, you're entitled to opinion. But I do have a small issue with these people that sit on a lot of social media and basically the flavor of the month manager is all of a sudden the savior of Arsenal. Um, you know, first it was Klopp, then it was Simeone, then it was Eddie, Eddie Howe. <laughs> um, and, and now it's Allegri, which is the most popular thing. And, and all this has come because uh, Allegri is, is essentially, you know, there's a lot of talk in Italy that, that he has decided that at the end of the season, he's going to walk away. Um, now, this is not to dis Allegri at all. He's, he's, for me, he's the best tactical coach in Europe, probably in the world game at the moment. Um, and, he, you know, he, he slaps the piss out of, out of Guardiola for me and everyone has a hard on for him. So, you know, he, he's a he's a brilliant manager. Um, and I get why he's he's flavour of the month. But uh, it, just because he's denied contact with Arsenal doesn't mean 
that we are the club he wants to come to. It doesn't mean that, that our board are speaking to him. It doesn't mean anything. It just means that he's saying he doesn't want to talk about his future. And from that, you, you get all these, and you know the ones I'm talking about, the, these people that just immediately jump on Twitter, post in every single picture under the sun. Oh, Allegri's, Allegri farted at, uh, at quarter three in the afternoon. That means he's Arsenal bound. It's just like people digging out all this, this information. And, and you actually ask them, you quiz them on these things, and you go, okay, you, you think that that Allegri or Simeone is the right fit for Arsenal. Can you just tell me the reasons why? And they're like, well, because um, well, he's won stuff for Juventus, isn't he? Yeah, and? Well, he's won stuff. Right, OK. So th- there's no there's no sort of, there's no nothing to back up the opinions. It's just, well, anybody is better than what we've got now, so let's pick the guy who's winning. And I, I, I just have a little bit of an issue with that. On the flip side of that... Is there anybody who's suitable? I mean, yeah, Allegri is the, is the obvious one if he becomes available, but Pep Guardiola, Pep Guardiola became available and we didn't go near him. Klopp became available we didn't go near him because Arsene decided he wanted to stick around. And I'm sure we'll touch on Arsene in a minute with the other questions, but until he decides he's going to walk away, a lot of it is largely, you know, largely speculation. Uh, and personally, I could I could be very wrong on this. I think we're more likely to get a, a Hassan Hootl bless you, I know it's coming, um, from from uh, RB Leipzig, than, than we are to get an Allegri. I just, uh, that's my personal opinion. I think we're more likely to go for a, an understated coach than, than one who is currently doing what he's doing. Um, and if and if people think that Allegri is, or he, Arsenal are going to be the only club in for him, if indeed we do require a manager at any point in the near future, we, we're never, we're not going to be the only club after him. There will be other clubs that will be very much in the mix. Uh, and a lot of people are forgetting, of course, Atletico Madrid are going to need a new manager quite soon when Simeone walks out. So, you know, it's it's not, it's not always about Arsenal. And sometimes I think we have a little bit of an arrogance that because we're Arsenal, every manager will, of course, want to come to us. Um, so that's a sort of a mini rant, but it's 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 a good question and, and to answer it directly. Allegri is probably the standout cali- uh, caliber of, of appointment you go for, but it isn't the one that I think we will end up going for when that time comes. Is that yes or no then? No. Sure. Thank you very much. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Right. This next one for Steve from uh, Noma, uh, as usual. She sent in a really good question. She says, we aren't winning the Premier League or the Champions League realistically. So what def- defines success from here on? FA Cup would be great, but it also represents stagnation. It depends who's defining what success is, doesn't it? If it's, either, if it's Stan Kroenke, it's fourth or higher being in the Champions League, getting through the next round of the Champions League if possible, and winning the FA Cup, if we won the FA Cup, the board would love it. Sponsors are quite like it. Commercially, it's not a bad thing. But I think, really, to be honest, uh, we've got to be looking to finish second. And given that everybody seems to be making fuck-ups, including ourselves, that's still something that's possible. And we've got to try and win the FA Cup. Also, we've got to see what we can do against Bayern. Uh I've got a suspicion what will happen against Bayern, but I, I think, to be honest, the, the, the whole thing comes back to the manager's got to decide whether he's staying and he's got to make his mind up because whilst he can't make his mind up, why, why should he expect Alexis Sanchez or Ozil to do likewise? And the other thing is, if he is staying, then he needs to fucking decide he is and just get on with it and, because I'm sure he needs to buy some players in the summer and he probably needs to lob quite a few out. And so... For me, I think it's as getting as high in the league as we possibly can. Took second, we finished second last year. So if we finished second and won the FA Cup, that's an improvement on last year. If we go further in the Champions League, that's an improvement on last year. As I said, I agree with Jeff. I think winning the league's out of the question. I think, but barring a complete and utter fuck up, Chelsea are going to walk it. Mm, can't see that going wrong. Okay, um, who should I give this one to? Uh, oh, no, right, this one is for Gimli. Um, okay. From Carl. He says, with all the talk about Arsene Wenger, the real question is, since it's National Pizza Day, what is the best topping? Everyone can answer this. Oh, sure. see, see. That's one uh, for Raj. Trust me, for someone who had <laughs> uh, Domino's pizza for dinner, uh, I can confirm that the best pizza topping ever is Domino's Meteor Pizza with his... Barbecue sauce, pork 
sausage, yeah. bits of bacon, and a nice meatball on it as well. It is like I'm just I'm erect just thinking about it. I, I want to eat some more if it hadn't already gone. What's your favourite pizza, Chris? This is important. Um, Kippers. Just, just a <laughs> Kippers. Kippers and seaweed. Just, just, <laughs> just Doctor Urtka. Just some Welks. <laughs> And a handful of and, and, uh, Dr. Urka, which is referred to uh, by the locals out here as Dr. Nazi. You know, they tend to steer clear of that brand. <laughs> I'm not surprised. <laughs> I'd say shit. memories of 1939. Just, uh, just, just. Wash it down with a nice rum. <laughs> a ginger beer. No, just, just a standard pepperoni. I, I like lots of cheese, a bit of pineapple as well, if you can whack it on. But well, I'm, I'm kind of. Pineapple wrong. and pepperoni on a pizza. Yeah. Yeah, I like fucking to, weird. I like to mix it's it weird. up a bit. Sweet corn as well is a big favourite of mine. So. Oh, oh, you dirty bastard. Yeah. What, do you, what, what do you have in Poland? This, this uh, cabbage. No, 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 we have Domino's here. We have uh, Telepizza of all the major brands. But there's a lot of quite a few Italian places which are actually owned by Italians out here. Um, the Grasso Pizza's one's pretty good. And I, I like um, more traditional flat, very thin pizzas yes. and things uh I, I i people won't like this but i actually like anchovies on pizza i like oh, the seafood right, yeah. ones or but my favorite i guess would be spinach with a poached egg in the middle and lots of uh goat's cheese or sheep's cheese on gold plated he wants it gold plated jeff when you <laughs> click your fingers and your manservant comes what what do you get him to uh, to make for you not pizza i'm not really a lover of pizza i, I, I can't get me nut round the fault of eating six part, six slices of cheese on toast, which it basically is. I'd, eat, I'd do that easily. We found well, somebody who doesn't like people. Oh, mm. My one yeah. would be, like Steve said, I like a, a, an original thin base. Uh, I like it quite well done. And I want mozzarella, tuna, sweet corn, mushroom, jalapeno. Woof, the good night. What is the matter with you? Shut you, up, you pig. There's the man that puts... Pineapple and pepperoni. There's never mind that. There's nothing There's wrong the with bloke that. that wears thigh high fucking cowboy boots. <laughs> listen, listen to what Danny's just described. It sounds revolting. I tell you, one thing it guarantees no one wants to steal a bit of your, apart from my mate Ren. He'll, he'll nick a bit. Well, there you go. See, be individual. You get it all to yourself. All right. Okay. Um, this one's for you, Jeff, and it's not food based. This is from Fiscal's Discos, number one. He says, We can moan at player performances, but is Venga. Uh, lo- is Wenger's loyalty to underperformance under oh Jesus Christ take a tooth out of turn to shit underperformers especially in in quotes older players one of his biggest flaws I think he's made a good point there it's a good question I, I, I still do believe that this is maybe the best squad he's had for maybe 10 years I think a lot of fans would think the same at the start of the season we was all very um you know, we was we was looking forward to the season, thinking we had a decent chance of, of doing good things because of the squad we had uh, had put together, the couple of signings that we did uh, 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 make that uh, was it looked like it was very progressive for the team. However, I do think, and I think the manager um, made a point of it in the week. You, you do see in, in games of football, it's all about wherever you're playing. It's about you've got to get. You've got, you've got to play better. You've got to get one over on your opponent. So if you're a centre forward, you've got to, you know, you've got to try and have that battle and beat your centre half. If you're a midfield player, the same. If you're a right back, you've got to stop that winger and have a better game than him, and 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 so forth. And if you can get seven or eight players doing that, then you're generally going to win the game. We haven't really been doing that, you know, the last couple of games, um, especially against Chelsea. We didn't really, you know, our players weren't better than their players all over the pitch. Um, and you've got to look at the experienced players and the, you know, the, the the old boys or, you know, the more experienced players in the squad, the players like Alexis, Ozil, Czech, Monreal, they do, in big games, need to really step up and, you know, all their experience needs to, they need to bring it out and do the job. Because they are obviously quality players, there's no doubt about that. You don't arrive at Arsenal Football Club without being a, a quality player, unless you're Yaya Sonogo, that is. But, um, 
you know, it is about time these boys, they do step up because Alexis was woeful on the weekend. Maybe his, his worst Arsenal performance I think I've ever seen. Uh, Ozil, unfortunately, another big game. Now, I love him. He's a fantastic player. I'm, I'm just concerned that the Premier League is 15% too tough for him in Madrid and in Germany. I think he could. He, he had plenty more time on the ball. He could he'd look up and he'll pick a pass out and stuff. In England, he just doesn't get the time. I'm not sure. Having seen him for the last two or three years, or how long? I think it's three seasons he's been at the club. I can't remember now. Overall, I mean, I know we do see we do see passages and you do see like little glimpses of the genius that he is. But I'm not sure the English game suits him. Um, Petr Cech, we've, we've covered Petr Cech. And but at the end of the day, you've got them big players. They've got to they've got to do it in the big games and they're not really doing it, are they? Did, did you see, Jeff? Uh, there was one point in that game at the weekend where uh, Alexis and Ozil were, were stood either side of the centre circle and the Chelsea player just fucking walked the ball right between them. Yeah. Did you did you yeah. see that? I mean, yeah. that, I think they pointed it out on match of the day, but I was watching it live and I thought, fucking hell, if that's how our day is going, just they, they just looked like they had no fight. They like they weren't up for it. Jolly good. Right, I shall move on. Uh, this one is for Chris um, from Jack Booth. He says, uh, I don't know if he's in relation to Jack Wilshire. You never know. Arson has recently asked oh, about. He's got the same first name. You never know. <laughs> sake uh, uh Arsenal's really asked about Mbappé in a press yeah. conference I find it odd how open he was about him and how good he is now uh, did I hear you talking about him on the hipsters pod um sort of we're doing him as a hipsters choice next week bastards go on in um Okay, so is the question why why he talks about him so openly, or or yes. my thoughts on the player? Well, a little or... bit of both. Try not to carpenter it. Okay, I'll do my best. Um, right. Okay. Well, int- everyone, if you've got if you've got smokes, smoke them. This might be a long one. Woo-hoo. I've heard that a few times. Um, yes. No, so, yeah, no, I haven't. You're right. Killian Mbappe Lotta. He's he's very very good. He's 18 years of age. Um, he's the, the obvious comparisons have been made to Thierry Henry because of basically the way he looks. He's a strapping lad. He's quite tall. He's quite athletic. Um, he plays a very similar way to Thierry. He cuts in from right or left. He's comfortable either side. He can play as a central striker, and he's quick. Um, and of course he's French. So obviously the comparisons have come in. Um, the, the biggest problem I think we're going to have with him is that he's been on the radar of a number of clubs for at least three years now. Yes, he's 18, but he was breaking through into Monaco's sort of fringes of first team training at 15. So he's been he's been around a little bit and people know about him. Um, he's, a, he's a very, very Arsene Wenger type of player. I think, and I know people have said about the Henri comparison, he reminds me more of, of Nick Anelka when he first came through. He, he's that kind of style of player. Um Whoever signs him is is going to get a gem. For me, he's he's one of the hottest properties in Europe right now. He's that good, um, and and obviously you've got to be a little bit careful when you bring players through. But Man City are proving with Jesus that sometimes if you take a gamble and you bring a player through at the right age, they can be everything you want and more. Um, I think Arsenal is a club he likes or would like. My biggest kind of worry is that, as as Arsene also sort of muted about the recent Kante comments, sometimes he can have as much interest in a player and player a player can be really keen on Arsenal, but ultimately a club with more money comes in and takes him away. And that's my concern. Um, Man City will be interested. Man United will be interested. I mean, anyone really with a, the chat but will be interested. I would love to see him at Arsenal because I do think that he is an absolutely perfect striker to bring through at this age. He would get games. I mean, what's, what's Oli Giroud, 29 now? I think he yes. is. So, I mean, he, you know, he's not going to go on forever and he's a very different type of striker. If we lost Alexis Sanchez, you know, I know we don't want to think about that thought, but we do have to be a bit careful about who we're bringing through. Um, one thing I will say is that this isn't a gamble. Anyone that signs this kid is going to get a world-class talent. The only other interesting thing about this this potential deal, and this is something that worries me a little bit, um, he is the next big athlete um, that is going to get a Nike boot deal. I didn't know whether I could talk about this, but it turns out I can. 
so luckily. Um, he's in line for a massive contract with Nike um, in that his obviously he's, you know, he's already wears their, their boots, but he's going to get a very large marketing deal out of this. And he's going to be one of the poster boys for, for Nike moving forwards. Is he Martial-esque? He's better. He's Ooh. far better. I so get, how much I will got, he go for then? Well, this is the problem. We're going to get priced out. And that's, that's, that's I mean, he... I think the bidding will start about 30 million, I think. Jesus. And that's what you have to pay for a player at this age. You pay that for Messi. Well, there you go. And and as I say, with this Nike deal, I, wo- I worry, could would we fund it? Because if he's going to go to a club Chelsea, have got Nike kits next year, as have that lot up the road, as have some of the biggest clubs in Europe. And I wonder if Barcelona might so have. So N- Nike are making toilet rolls now? <laughs> yes, indeed. Andrex. Nike Andrex. Andrex um, Townsend. <laughs> Andrex Townsend. <laughs> But no, I mean, he's, he's he's better. He's better than Marcia. I know a lot of people were, you know, crowing about Marcia. Oh, why didn't we go and get Marcia? Why did we? Well, because this kid's better and he's younger and he's got more to offer. I genuinely believe that. And and I think wherever he goes, someone's going to get an absolute bargain. But I'm a Mar- little bit worried. Marcia might well be on his bike at a United as well if... Uh... He, he will, Steve. Yeah, the first opportunity he gets, he cannot stand playing under Mourinho. It's obvious. And will they get their fifty million back? Good God! No. Uh, I mean, actually, they, actually, if you read the contents of the contract, which add-ons, was, was it? Uh, mm-hmm. They rather don't want to sell him for a lot of money because it means he'll just have to hand it over to his previous oh, club. So, so there's that Ballon d'Or contract as well, isn't there? That clause, if he wins the Ballon d'Or, the the, the bell the ender. The uh, Bell end clause. Yeah, no, yeah. I mean, he's, Martial's a classic example of a player that will end up in, in Italy and Germany and everyone look back and go, oh, there was a lot there. He's a very good player. I'm not saying he's not, but he was never worth the money they paid for him. Whereas if, if somebody signed uh, Mbappe for, 40, for 45 million, I still wouldn't say it's a penny less than he's worth because he's he is a fabulous, fabulous talent. And how many young strikers are there out there with pace in Europe? Not many. So I, I I would love him, but I, I have a horrible feeling we're not going to end up with him. I remember Gimli telling me the other day that he reminded him of a young Lenny Henry, <laughs> which I thought was nice. Steve, question for you. This is from a variations of this from Rory Hansen. Mr. Alex Alves and Mr. Bearded Dragon have all made similar points about um, possibly switching to a 3-4-3 system and what players would you play there? So that again, 3-4-3 three, three at the back? Yeah. Could we? Would we? Would you like us to? Should we? Mm, I don't think Wenger would ever go three at the back. I think we're, we're more likely to go four three three. Uh, he's done that twice recently, hasn't he? Yeah, but he's done it because I think he did it because he felt that he had a weakness in midfield because Xhaka was suspended and because other people were injured. And I think we had a massive, like last time I was on here, Clive from Guna Ramble was on and we were talking about the need for three in midfield. I think Chris was on as well. I, I would like to see uh, a midfield three where actually Xhaka sits, sits just slightly in front of or behind, depending on what he wants, when it suits, a midfield two of Oxlade, Chamberlain and Ramsey. Because I think You've got the ability to break moves up there. You've got Ramsey's got the ability to go forward. Ram, uh, Xhaka's more of a deep line playmaker. And those two rambling forwards up and down, they've got the energies to do it. Ox has got the pace to frighten the shit out of people. And we saw against Southampton, when he plays in the middle, he's got a confidence that he doesn't have when he's on the wing. Flicking 30 yard balls around, that, that assist of his for uh, one of Alexis's goals was brilliant. So, I mean, obviously, he, he, there's a talent there that needs to be used and, in, and it can be used in the middle. And I think the same with Ramsey, you might get a bit better out of him because he can go forward, break in the box there. That would give you, then you've got a choice of a front three. So that front three could be Lucas Perez because that means that a defender is going to get covered properly. And Lucas is a horrible cunt as well, likes digging people out and kicking them, defending his teammates. But fantastic at forming partnerships with players, making goals and scoring goals. He was a good finisher. And you have to have Sanchez in the middle for me. I think Sanchez needs to be instructed. No, sorry, you don't, you don't fucking drop deep to get the ball. You're not the playmaker. Your job's to terrorise defenders and make them shit their pants and leave them on their ass, like you did to West Ham. And uh, I think... On the right, you, you then got a choice of well, do we play Özil there? Does this front th- does this front three have to actually stay in position? Can they bilaterally run, switch in and out along the positions along the line, or do it vertically? And does that mean that because you've got the the other three behind them, Özil's got more room to exact more damage? Probably it does. That's what I'd do. 
I wanted to um, just ask Jeff a really quick question, just on a similar vein to what Steve just said there about the three in the middle. It, it kind of relates to the system. Um, Jeff, do you think that the end of this season, no matter what happens, uh, obviously when we inevitably win the Champions League and FA Cup double, yeah, um, do you think that whether it's Arsene Wenger or another coach, this is the last, potentially the last season that we see Aaron Ramsey and, and Jack Wilshere as Arsenal players, if if things carry on the way they are. That's not to dig out either player, but mm. do, do you feel like maybe if we were to change the system, maybe those two would we'd finally go, you know what, it just hasn't worked? Well, I mean, looking at it currently, they're both not good enough to play for Arsenal, I'm afraid. Um, I mean, we've been waiting for Rambo to come into form again and it clearly hasn't happened. Um, I think he slows our game down for his little flicks and tricks. I just wish he'd get back to basics and I see other midfielders out there, uh, mediocre clubs that are doing a better job than Aaron Ramsey for just keeping the game moving. Arsenal are a football club that it's all about pass and move and quick movement and quick passing. I think he slows us down. Jack... um, I've not followed Bournemouth. I've not really seen a lot of them, but I, I, I hear he's been doing okay. But he's playing regularly and got two assists all season, no goals. Yeah, I don't, he, I don't ain't, think... he ain't pulling up trees. Exactly. Else, yeah. He's, he's not pulling up on the main striker. Yeah, he's not pulling up trees. So um, I think I think he'll maybe keep one of them. He'll most probably keep Rambo. I, I, I said it on the last podcast. I think Jack may have, may have played his last game for Arsenal, which is a shame. But you know, there's no time for sentiment now. We can't. We can't. I've said it before again. We can't really carry passengers any longer. And if they don't, if they don't liven themselves up, I'm afraid they're going to find themselves moving on to a different club. But I think there's a bigger problem at Arsenal, with regard to, um, you know, again I've said it before. But there has got to be change, in my honest opinion. I don't think it's the manager that's got to be changed because I'm not sure that even if if we got another manager, I'm not sure that anything would change with regard to league position and stuff like that. In fact, in fact, I think we might we might deplete a little bit. I think we might go out of the top four. And I know people say, "Ah, we we might as well." Blah blah blah. You know, we're not going to win the Champions League, but if we drop out of the Champions League, there's so many things that could happen that could go wrong. One, you're not going to attract the top players. All right, we're Arsenal Football Club. We still will attract top players. I understand that. But they all want to play in the Champions League. There's no doubt about that. Um, two, you know, the funds that you get from being in the Champions League, not only not only from the Champions League itself, but the commercial revenue that you get just you know, being in the Champions League. You know, and that's, that's, that's going to be affected. You look at the likes of Liverpool, um, not Man United. You've got to disclude them, you know. But the other teams that have that have, and every single team in the Premier League wants to get in the top four. So, all right, I know it's not a trophy, but you know it is something. It's an achievement to get into the top four because everybody wants to wants to get there. But I just think that the bigger problem is that we we need investment. I just do think it's come to the stage now where. It's um, if you can't beat them, you've got to join them. Arsene Wenger's had three years now in having money to compete on a, on a better stage than what we did have before. We still can't compete on on the wages, the, the salaries that Manchester United, Chelsea, and Manchester City are, are are giving out. That's the problem. We do need to get investment in where we can go and give £250,000 to three or four or five players like the likes of Chelsea City and, and, and Man United. So I think unless we get that investment, I'm not really sure that things are going to change, sadly, but that's how I see it. Steve? So, sorry, I was muted there. I, I don't agree. I, I, think you, I think we do need change, and I think the change is not just about the manager. I think... The guy's been there 20 years. I think he's had a decade where he's been under the restriction of the owner being a bastard, not letting them have the money or not spending the money. There was money there. But now he's had money. And I think that for me, what what upset me the most this season is that Santi Cazula got injured so many months ago now. And it's so obvious to it. Everybody I respect who's got a footballing brain that that system we play in does not work without Santi Cazorla. Yet 
we've spent months experimenting trying to find a solution for it. And then only when we go to play Chelsea does he play the three in the middle we need. And it all goes fucking horribly wrong. So for me, I, I think one of the biggest issues is Jeff just was talking about people who are not good enough to play for Arsenal. I think there's also people in that in our side who are too comfortable with their position at Arsenal. And there's people who are bottlers at Arsenal. And I'm sorry, I know this is going to upset a lot of people. Maybe Jack Wilshere doesn't want to play for Arsenal anymore. Maybe he likes life down at Bournemouth. It keeps him away from things that he maybe, as a young man with kids, he should be up to. Maybe that, that's just what he wants to do. Theo Walcott has had a very good living at Arsenal Football Club. He's never got back to the heights of the one good season he had. He has his moments, but players jogging around the pitch, playing against Chelsea at Stamford Bridge, he's not gone out and covered Victor Moses. He was responsible for the first goal because Moses was able to draw Nacho out because Walcott didn't cover him. Then when the rebound, when, then when Alonso's gone in, Walcott stood by Alonso. He doesn't even go with him. He doesn't even track him. He's just jogging around as if he's having a little walk with his kids down the park feeding the ducks. I'm sorry, he's earning £100,000 a week. Let that, let that sink in. That's £5.2 million a year. And, you know, Jeff's sitting there going, oh, well, we can't pay the wages, you know, uh, that City and other teams go, well, no, we can't pay individual players ridiculous amounts of money, but the, we've got the fourth biggest wages bill in the Premiership, 149 million quid. In fact, actually, I think it's bigger than that. So the money's there. Just got to stop paying players who are shit, who are not good enough. You know, there's a yes, we've got to have some homegrown players. That's why Jenkins has not been sold. We've got the Ox, so we can we can do the homegrown thing. Why why are we, why are we still employing Sonogo? Why are why are we We've got players in there running 80, 90, 100 grand a week. As Jeff rightly said, not going to play to us. They need hoiking out. The wages bill needs to be dug up. And it needs to be redistributed so you can keep Alexis Sanchez and you can keep Ozil. And as Jeff said, you are going to have to look at playing maybe one or two more players. Out. The other thing is, talk about commercial revenue. We, we would actually need to have somebody put in charge of that job who knows what they're doing and who can build a big team around him to go out there and get the money in. Because at the moment, they're not doing it. And I'm not going to compare us to Manchester United because they're the platinum edge brand on that. But we're not doing it. We're not even matching Chelsea. <coughs> are, you, uh, are you up for that job, Steve? Because we know we're trying to get Dom in, in as head of physio. Yeah, I'd have that job straight yeah. away. Oh, there you go. That's two, that's two um, feet in the door we got. Yeah, um, but so there's that. And uh, on, on top of that, look, look at what's behind. Let's, let's, I don't want to be sort of horrible. But if, if the worst happened tomorrow morning at 9am, Arsenal Football Club have got a fucking massive hole in the middle of it. You know, Robert Perez has asked to be the director of football. He's a man who's respected by our players all over the world. You know, he's an invincible, played in one of the best French squads ever out there. You know, that's... I, I think when Arsenal... The changes made when Arsenal goes, Gazidis as a, as a, as a CEO... Needs to run the club properly. No more of this bollocks where the manager's deciding who's the boss or deciding about, you know, the catering or any shit. No, the new manager is going to stick to football and on the pitch. That's what you do. And we're going to have a director of football with some with some players around it who advise the board on football matters. People like Lee Dixon, Martin Keown, maybe Ian Wright, but definitely someone like uh, Lauren, who's got his head switched on. Uh, and also, as well, somebody from the women's game, which Arsenal, you know, the biggest bloody club in the world at, practically, uh, get on the board to advise Gazidis and that lot. And, yeah, manager says, I want these players. And they give that, that, that lot a list, and they work with Dickie Boy, and they're responsible for the wages and the contracts, not the manager. That's what needs to happen. And, you know, you're not going to get players who are allowed to have a win a break and allegedly a flu or you're not going to have players who are, who are allegedly injured but possibly having a holiday for employment regulation reasons having a comfortable old life because they're all a new manager shits everybody up you know, that, I, I guarantee you if you get a new manager people say oh you know it'd be a disaster well you know i remember back in the 60s and we were fucking awful really fucking awful and then we got, uh, we got, we, we had uh, Don L now and again to sort things out. And we had Terry Neal, and he was a fucking disaster. And we protested. We had the Arsenal Action Group fucking 
protests outside Highbury, protests during the games. Oh, it was absolutely toxic. Eventually, he got, he got the Spanish archer. Me and Jeff were talking about it before we kicked the podcast off. We went to Upton Park. We got beat 5-1. I got clumped in the uh, the, the chicken run. Mind you, I was standing there drinking at the bar and having a fag. But Charlie Nicholas scored. I forgot myself and got smacked. But next day, we sacked. He was gone. And we got Bertie Me. You know, we, 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 Bertie Me was before. But we moved on. You know, we moved on. And then George Graham came. And that was a new measure. And, but we didn't win the league for 17 years. But we moved on upwards. And then George went, and we got Bruce Rioch, who lasted about five minutes because the players hated him. You mean Don Howe, him. not Bertie Me. Yeah, Bertie Me would have been around 500 by then. Yeah, sorry. Well, not you to know, be I'm your not... football, you just forgot. <laughs> yeah, no, no, it's just but, but, um, yeah. ancient. But the point I'm trying to make is, is that the idea that a new manager coming in will mean that we'll go down the pan is bollocks. We won't. Because the way that we've got too much money to spend and too much class in the squad. So, so something else, Steve, to just, just to interject with you a second. The other reason that I think the main comparison with Arsene Wenger going is, of course, Alex Ferguson at Manchester United. But let's not forget one thing. Alex Ferguson walked away from Manchester United with a title win in his last year. They, they've they gone from being at their peak in the league to going to what they are now. We're, we're nowhere near in the league. He I think... also left when they were broken, didn't he? Yeah. He, he knew. knew. Well, he left. He, he left them with a cupboard bear as well, didn't he? I mean, they yeah. were full, they, and, and think, they're still suffering it now because they had a very aged squad. And and yeah. you can't say that about Arsenal. If Arsenal went tomorrow morning, the oldest player is, is uh, Koscielny, I think, or, or no, Czech, but he's mm. a keeper. So the oldest outfield player is Koscielny. And that's and that's to Arsenal's credit. I think that's one thing you yeah. have to say. He is trying to leave a club set up, not just at this level, but if you look at what they're doing in the youth team, the players they're bringing through that level, he's trying to he's trying to leave it. I think the the biggest problem Arsenal's going to have, um, you know, when he does leave, I'm sure Jeff would agree, is is letting go because no matter what anyone says about him or criticizes him, he loves that football club. You know, he lives for that football club. But, that's uh, all he knows. You know, he's yeah, and I, and I also... marriage for fuck's sake. Yeah, but I also think it, it's and it's changed him as a person. His missus mm-hmm. turned around. And she said, I, "I don't know him anymore. He scares me." And yeah. I don't think she means it scares me as in anything unpleasant. Just as yeah. in it, the fact that he's put just everything football. in his life to one side to that is just scared of the fact that he sacrificed everything. But yeah. I think it's got to be a clean break. It has yeah, it to be has a clean be. break. Can you imagine Allegri or any manager coming in and having him sat upstairs going, yes, I'm going to exactly negotiate it. You can't have that player because I, I'm only bidding five million quid for him. Yep. Uh, you can have Mbappe, but only if I can get him for 10 quid and a banana and 50 quid a week. And therein lies the problem. And this, and this, is, why, this is why I get you know, a little bit frustrated with those people that just say, oh, get rid of him, get rid of him, bring in Allegri. It's not about just the manager. It's, it's about restructuring, essentially, the whole football club because you, you've got to have, as you rightly say, Steve, all the big clubs now have directors of football. Their managers do not do that. I don't think there's one single club in the world like Arsenal where the manager basically basically does everything. I think if you gave Arsenal a brush at the end of the at the end of each game, he'd sweep the changing rooms. That is how he lives. That is that is the way he runs. Can, the I, can I make a point that any, anybody out there who does who's never been a CEO of a big business, I actually, as somebody who's been a senior manager in a multinational business, I, I, I feel sorry for Ivan Gazidis. He gets a lot of grief. Does a, a good job as a business person, football aside, and he's a neutered CEO. He's got a superstar manager who's allowed to do what the fuck he likes by his major shareholder. So he, he can't make decisions. He can't run the business to the strategy that he, he wants. So if you serious, anybody out there seriously thinks that Gazidi doesn't want to be the boss at Arsenal, think again because he does. And secondly, if you think he ain't got a fucking plan to do that restructuring, then think again because he fucking will has. And that's, that, that's the worry, isn't it? That, that's, that's it's not a worry for me. He's a good businessman. No, I mean the worry of the whole restructuring. That's that's that is, and 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 if we do, and people have to be be, be prepared for, you know, when that day comes, and and it's not that whole. Oh, be careful what you wish for, because I know people are tired of that argument. Um, it is still relevant, but I think it, it, it's a bit of a tired old drum now. But you you have to be prepared that we when when things change, and they will at some point, it's inevitable. And when Arsenal does go, whomever the manager is, whether it's high profile or low profile. There's a very realistic possibility that we could basically be Liverpool, Everton, Spurs. You know, we could be just sort of outside of, of all, where all the good stuff is happening. And I know people would argue we are now. That's their opinion. But we have to be braced for the fact it could go all very Bruce Rioch for a season. I hope not, but it could. And if it if it does, 
we've we've got to be braced for that because the, the amount of changes we're going to have to make is substantial. Can, right. I just, can, can I just make one little retort to that? Go on in. We signed a bloke called Arsene Wenger. He came in and did the fucking double and no one knew who the fuck he was. Absolutely. Which is why the big name manager is not always the one that no, absolutely. you looking at. Yeah, agreed. As long as there's no one called Dragon. All right, two more <laughs> quick questions. Uh, we had some really good ones in, but we've gone into great detail with some of the questions. One for Gimli from Big Red Guna. Opinions on what's causing the inconsistent performances. And then we've got one for Jeff and then we're done. Are you on mute, you tit? Who? Me? <laughs> Every week. Uh, I would I would say that the, the words from the manager worry me, saying that they were motivated and then saying that they were not, motiva- not motivated. Um, you say. I, th- I think they lack leaders in that team. Um, I, I think they lack big game players. You know, I fail to see just anything good about the team at the moment, really. Um, they, they lack conviction in the system they play in. I, I don't think they have confidence in their own ability or the ability of people around them. And you can see it clearly every week with Alexis Sanchez and Massa Ozil. Um, you know, I, I tweeted after the game that you, you, how could you blame them if they wanted to fuck off in the summer? How could you blame them? I couldn't. I really couldn't. I think there's many things wrong, which we've talked about in the podcast, but I don't think it lies just with the team. I think it, it requires a shake up top, top to bottom. Yeah, and we I think, shoot more though. Oh, without doubt. Good. Right, awesome. one final one for Jeff because we've been going now and a half. This is from Yonko Abs, and he's a, a two-parter, but I'll just do the first part. Is there any evidence that next season's Premier League campaign won't be the same as it has been for the last three or four seasons? Not really. Um, you know, it's just we. You just got to hope that they that they 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 grow together. Um, it's still, it's still a long way to go yet, isn't there? But I'll, I'll, I'll keep on harping back that, that, that generally the team that pays, that pays the, the, the most money and spends the most money on players uh, for transfer fees and for um, salaries, they generally, in correlation, it'll go from top to bottom. Now you can discount that by saying, well, less than what it last year, but that's, that's like. Once in thirty years, I think Forest was the last team to jump up like that and 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 then, you know surprise everybody. But you know it's a game of football. It's not we're not it's not a film set. It's not a film where you know everything's all scripted. You're talking about human beings that are on a on a pitch as a team. Eleven players that they make errors uh, as we saw at the weekend. You know uh, we pet a check that 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 killed us that third goal. Um, and you just got to hope they make less mistakes and um, and just do better. There's not really more that you can say. I don't really know. I haven't really got a crystal ball, but uh, for looking at it at the moment, I, I don't know. I really don't know. Oh, it makes me sad to hear you down, Jeff. No, I'm not down. I'm always positive. No, I'm, I'm all right, but I don't you expect us. Oh, no, no. I just don't expect us to win the league, Danny. I, honestly, I don't. I don't expect us to. I'm full of hope. Uh, I'm full of hope that we can go on a big run, and you know they get the they gain the confidence whilst they're 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 in the league like Leicester did last season, like Chelsea are doing at the moment. You know uh, that pivotal moment when we give them a, 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 a chasing at our place, and then they they change the formation, um, and they yeah, they got used to that. That suited them, and all their players, you know, uh, they 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 bought into it, and you know they're all quality. Like I said, they're champions. They've already won the league two years ago. That team was already there. He's added a couple of players, and they're performing. I'm, 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 I'm very positive. I'm always very positive, but I, I just, I'm not sure that we can. We, we still got that to win the league. It takes a lot. Do you, do you think that this week we're kind of clutching at straws? We all know that Arsenal shit. It's just maybe we have a problem shit. saying no, we're, it. Well, we're not shit, Kim. I don't know how you can say that, mate. Well, or maybe we're not as good as maybe we think we are. No, no, because you didn't think we were going to win the league to start of the season. So what do no, you expect no. it for now? No, no, of course I didn't. I, I, I wouldn't no. have expected us in well, all truth to finish sure. top four. But what gives us the right to 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 do better than teams that uh, pay more money for 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 salaries and pay more money for players? They have that. We have, we have no right, Jeff. We don't. Well, and that's it. Well, there's a reason why we're fourth, in my opinion, because we fourth we we we, we, we pay the wages at fourth place. But we ain't. We don't come fourth. We've sometimes we've overachieved a little bit. We've come second and third. 
Oh dear. Well, if anybody does need a hug, we have the International Holland Fund and Fund where we will fly Jeff from Canada over to hug anybody. And it's only £250,000 if you need that service. It gives a great hug and all. I'll give you that. I tell you. It's certainly. I'm still, I'm still warm and giggly oh, from the last I time never, you hugged me. I've never had a hug. I was well, the only one he didn't see. Uh, you probably would have put him off hugs forever. I could probably we, would um, have. You stink. Could, could we all club together? You know, you know, we've got this new banner for Atom and, and Humber. Yeah. Could we all club together and get a banner that goes basically behind the entire back of the goal that just says Arsenal Football Club, it's the hope that kills you? And then underneath, what's that Ula boot? <laughs> it is, though, isn't it? It's the hope that kills you. I still enjoy it, though. I still enjoy going yeah. over there. It's brilliant. I still enjoy it. You know, it, it, was, it was painful at the weekend. But I still enjoy going to watch it. I don't know. Maybe I'm just addicted. It's worse than heroin, mate. You're a dickhead. <laughs> it's addicted. Oh, sorry. I'm both. <laughs> no, you're not, Jeff. You're, you're lovely. lovely. Predictions and the, the gentleman's nods. OK, wonderful. Uh, we shall continue. I believe there's two games for predictions this week. What? Danny, did you want? Did you, uh, we've got Hull at home and Bayern away. So did you want them both? I have both yeah. here. Yeah. Let's come around quick. Yeah. Oh, I don't think we should talk about the second one. Just just put it down as um, uh, a cruel, cruelness. No, we home nonsense. away against Bayern. We're away. <laughs> we'll win. <laughs> oh, geez. Well, go on then. All right, well, I am going we'll win. Uh, <laughs> we'll. 3-1 to us against Hull, and I'm going for Olivier Giroud. Oh, and 3-1. You actually did bother sending me one last week, did you? No, I didn't. What, what do you want me to do? Yeah. 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 You uh, ask anybody crime. else. Oh, well, no, no, but you said, and Bayern. Bayern yeah. is 2-1 Lewandowski. 2-1 win or 2-1 defeat? No, we do, we, no, we lose that one. Okay, we didn't make it clear. No. It all right. Rules it, rules it, rules. <laughs> Grab that. Fuck yes. sake. Danny? I'm going to go 2 2 with Hull Hernandez to score first. So we will luckily we'll be 2 0 down in the first 10 minutes, claw it back. <laughs> and then I'm going to go 4 0 Bayern. Well, oh, okay. Jeff? I'm going to go um, 2 1 Alexis for the, the whole City game. It'll be a tough one. And I'm going to go 2-2 for the Bayern game. I think we get a draw out there. I really do. First goal scorer out there, I would say Lewandowski. Can't ever remember a time on this show where you've given us a draw, Jeff. I can't. Never happened. That never happens. Chris? Has, I'm sure it has. Uh, I think we'll draw one all with Hull. Danny stole mine. I thought 2-2, but I'll go one all. Um, yeah, just, just have a feeling. I think we'll go... Will we go behind or in front? I think we'll go in front. Uh, fucking hell, he's an Iwobi. I'll go for a Iwobi first scorer. Um, and in Bayern, I think we'll win 2-1. You, you laugh. You laugh where you like. And when Who's going to score? John Lukic? You can come back and you can say, <laughs> you were right all along. I'm very, very sorry. Uh, do you Grovel. think we're going to win the away leg as well? Home leg as well? I, I think, think that oxide's we'll, melting your brain. I think over two <laughs> legs we'll beat Bayern Munich. Oh, no. I've done a wee. <laughs> Yeah, do, you think, do, you think, do you think? Do you think? Do you think we could go on and win that tournament? Um, of course he does. Don't. I'm on the edge. Don't. He'll answer yes, and I'll die. Yeah, I do. Yeah, I do. <laughs> oh, I'm nervous. I'm nervous. I'm nervous. Yeah, I'm nervous. To everybody. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not so, saying we will. I'm, but I'm saying. If, if you, you, you if you got we, hold of John can. Walsh's poppers again. <laughs> can you hey, Chris, I know you're teetotal, but have you uh, have you fallen off the wagon or something? You're on the no. Ramping. Genuinely, I, I know I know I'll catch a lot of flack for that, but it would be so typical Arsenal one day. I mean, Christ, we got to the final with a back four of Flamini, Abue, Senderos, Who and whoever the other one was. I Juru, don't want was us it? to get to the final because we'll just bottle it again. Oh, that, well, is that, amazing. that is amazing thinking about that. Isn't it just? Flamini and, and, left back, and barring Abue a, right back. And barring a red card in the final, we could could have won it. I mean, it's a, it's should have won it. Even down to 10, we should have Agreed. won it. Agreed. I, no, I, I, I'm not saying we will. I'm not stupid. There's a lot of very good teams in this tournament. But, yeah, I, uh, I'm not, I wouldn't rule it out. You know, I'm not, However crazy that sounds, I'll either look very clever or very stupid, one of the two. But I think we'll beat Bayern away 2-1. And I think uh, I think we'll go in front. Ujo, I think we'll score that. Uh, Ollie's got a good record over there, and he? I'll give give Ollie Giroud the first go on that one. I well, didn't say Sunogo. Wow, so it certainly <laughs> certainly sounds like someone's been on the Evo stick. Well, well Steve, uh, I think the whole game's going to be a very hard game. 
I watched uh, them play Liverpool, and the reason I watched them was because they just signed a Polish national squad player called Kamil Grozitski, who who's, who uh, signed from a French side. Um, Red. And he ran Milner ragged. Absolutely ripped, ripped Liverpool to arseholes out down the right-hand side. So Hector Bellerin needs to be unconcussed and needs to up his game. And whoever's playing in front of him needs to do likewise. Otherwise, we'll be roasted down there. I think we'll win it, but I think it'll be a high-scoring game. I think it'll be 3-2. They've got another four. They've got Hernandez and they've got another four. Uh, up Ooh, front. Yes. A, that's the one. He, he could have had a hat-trick against Liverpool. Uh, it, it just bad finishing and the goalkeeper getting lucky uh, on a couple of occasions. So it will be tough. And also, Hull have got quite a big ex-Middlesex contingent. So they're always cunts. They play their fucking best game of the season against Arsenal. It means something to them. I think it's going to be tough, but I think we'll win it 3-2. And I think the first scorer will be Kamil Grzycki. Good job I went and found that, and I've cut and pasted his name, so there's no fucking that up. Uh, uh, as for the Bayern game, it's going to be very, very tough over there. I think we'll lose 3-1, and the first scorer will be Robin. And then his leg will come off. <laughs> no, then uh, hopefully Xhaka will put the cunt into orbit, and he'll be fucking dead, and he won't be available for the next game. Of course, he'd be back for that, wouldn't he? Yeah. yeah. Uh, I- Shout outs then. Uh, I have two this week and I'll keep them quick. My first one is Nathan Young, who is at Young N8. T. Uh, Nathan is trying to set up an Arsenal supporters club in Colorado Springs. So if you're from that area, get in touch with him. And if you're not, give him a follow anyway. Um, and my second one is Gary K, who is at Gary Kelly with one L84. Um, and he's been rewarded with a shout out. Because apparently he never listens to the end of the show. So he's got his shout out. So if he hasn't listened, he's not going to say thank you. And I'm not going to do this again. Uh, Danny. Um, to everybody who has joined my Forza Horizon 3 club, it's hashtag ABW. So feel free to join us. And also last week, I butchered someone's name, Jario Andres ZJ. And he and told me. And just done it again. And he said it's uh, Hiro Andres Hara Mi Joe. We have actually had him on a Deadline Day podcast, Danny, where you had the same problem, yeah. Well, now I've got it right. That's because he spelt it phonetically. Hi, Ro. Yeah. Hi, Ro! No, this is going down a bad place. Is that your shout-out? Yeah. Yeah. Jeff. He's very quiet. He might be muted. Oh, he's gone. Uh, Steve? No, 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 I'm here. Sorry, I beg your pardon. I um no, they can all fuck off this week. I've been getting battered, mate. So no one's getting it. <laughs> <laughs> I see you and FK, you and FK getting a, an un, unmerciless uh, battering. They were getting a right tonking all week. I'm telling you, good stuff though. Ah, oh, lovely. Uh, Steve, um, I got two. Uh, one's a mate of mine at Johnny Arsenal. Um, a, a fellow sympathetic on the politi- politics front. He's a cabbie as well. Top low, very funny. Calls it like he sees it and does goes to games. You can find him at uh, Johnny with a big capital J and then Arsenal. And then the second one is a lady, Shannon Sleeman, an Arsenal fan from New York. And she's uh, at the moment trying to run away from New York to get work in Europe. And you can she's a mate of uh, Laura Guna Howard's, smart ass Guna. But you can find Shannon at Celtic Chic seventy three. Wonderful. And uh, Chris, if you'd like to finish us off. Who uh, misses? Uh, yeah, a couple of quick ones. Um, one's Danny's. <laughs> well, it would be quick ones if you're going to finish it off. Hey, all over the face. Uh, Danny's favourite chap and mine, uh, Bobby Chakraborty. Chakraborty. Um, <laughs> there you go. There it is. I've asked him. Um, he said it's OK. Carry on. Oh, well, that's all right then. Uh, no, he's a lovely guy. Um, always uh, always a regular interactor, so I like him a lot. Um, and the other one is um lovely, lovely account, this one. Really, really good follow this. Uh, it's at Liam underscore good enough. Lovely, lovely individual. Um, definitely, definitely not a parody account of an absolute. Yeah, lovely, lovely chap. Um, do keep uh, yeah, follow. you followed now. It's it's I'm followed. I'm, I'm still not followed. It, it's quite funny. Uh, let me just um, let me just give you an example. Uh, this is um, a reply to Gary Neville. 
uh, Gary Neville's potential appearance on a certain TV channel, he simply tweets, don't do it, Gary. They'll try and lick you and touch you. They're not used to human contact. Plus, you won't understand the word the chavs say. So if you if you fancy a bit of that, then um, give that a follow. It's, it's quite amusing, that account. Wonderful. Yeah. So I'm definitely going to have to do that then. Um, so have we got any blogs to promote, Danny? Certainly do. And I must apologise to Drew and Jeff. I was quite poorly with my lack of teeth. And so I didn't retweet it as often as I did, let alone from the pod accounts. But it's via Drew, who is at AFC BVB1410. And it is what Arsenal's January could have been. And he just it's just tears, really, and banging on the desk and... Uh, yeah, just talking about what, what we could have done, what we should have been doing, and uh, yeah, shame. And I think it's got to do with transfers and all the kind of stuff that would have made January a wonderful January. So, as usual, superb blog from Drew, and well done to Jeff for organising it, because uh, we can't. Banging yeah. on the desk, is that John Welsh's new movie? I, I think it is, and uh, he has a starring role of a Mr Shredder has been in there, banging okay. away. Good time. He's uh, Shredder has been uh, it has been rumoured that he uh, actually was yeah. out all night recently. Yeah, bird uh, watching. But well, actually, uh, I think he was up to his knuckles in something. Yeah, ornithology. <laughs> he loves uh, it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yes, he, good. He, he did do a very good job on the radio show last week. We should compliment him for that. Oh no, he didn't turn the fucking light on. But again, that's probably for the best. And uh, I can confirm Jason has just texted me, uh, the Welsh warrior, and he said that his pizza topping is, uh, and it's a surprising one, is Kit Kats. Oh, Kit Kats. Kit Kats. Yeah. Um, uh, used or unused? Uh, uh, oh, he, he hasn't specified, so I take either. He, he must be a lover of the anchovy. <laughs> you would think so. He's no stranger. Or, or, um, Right, uh, let's try and wrap this up. Uh, so all that's left then is to thank my wonderful panellists tonight, Steve, Chris, Jeff and Danny. You have to be here. So do you. Nice to have you, you back. Thank, thank you. Harry Crouch. What? Thank you, Harry Crouch. Oh, lovely. Uh, so that was a Burkamp Wonderland podcast. Thank you so much for listening and keep it Arsenal. Good night. I fail to see how you're going to get extras out of this because all we were talking about at the start was my KFC arsehole. I was recording then. Can I, can, I just, can I just put a bid in for the fact that I forgot to mention Troy Deeney, which has pissed me off because he's a fucking fat Sunday roast. Oh, I'll tell you what then, Steve. Why don't, you do all the, fucking day? Why, why don't you do a little bit of an extension of the rant and add a Troy Deeney on it as the extra tonight? Because you've stolen the show with that rant. I, I really couldn't have put it any better myself. It was truly marvellous. Definitely the most cunts <laughs> spoken in one in any one podcast ever. Yeah. Can't yeah, beat a bunch of one. let's be fair, you can't beat a bunch of cunts. Well we do every year it's called fucking finishing above Tottenham. Hey! But <laughs> yeah. uh you know I don't I mean Toy Dean, I mean for fuck's sake, every week all them Watford cunts are peering over the fucking fence at Colney to see what might have been, what will never have been, because there's Spurs rejects next door. And that fat brummy bastard who looks like he spends all day at Weatherspoon's fucking Sunday twenty four seven all you can eat carvery. Fucking in there, ex fucking convict in, in there in there said Arsenal weren't up for it, they bottled it. Okay. So uh, hold on a minute. Well Watford, how many cup finals you oh yeah, you lost it, didn't you, to Everton? And you've been relegated more times. The only thing he's got over Arsenal players, he's been relegated more times than anyone else. Go fuck yourself, son, and get on a diet. I I, Spin down I spoons. One, two for one, one special. One more yes. tweet from, uh, from, from Liam Goodenough. It just simply says in capitals, look at me, 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 look at me. I am important. The main, the main, <laughs> DJ, the main room DJ in the uh, Barnet Why Do We Rest Home for OAPs. <laughs> spinning the wax for the old ladies and next my, up Vera Lynn my old man said be a Tottenham man I said fair enough sounds like a good idea but it's probably fruitile <laughs> oh, he good. follows me he follows yeah, me Liv, I enough. think he follows us all oh, he doesn't I... follow me yet because he has to ask because I have to have my account locked because <clears> I get much abuse 
don't think I've you got follows sneaky me suspicion. Either. It's it's somebody that we might all know. Maybe is it, is it OG? Maybe. I don't think it's OG. I think OG's got <laughs> <published play. laughs> Five days ago, he tweeted the video Chelsea Arsenal with uh, Claude, and he put Uncle Claude not happy neither. Are the voices in his head? Even a cup of soup won't turn it around. <laughs> Even a what? <laughs> All right, here we go. It goes Uncle Claude not happy neither. Are the voices in his head? Even a cup of soup won't turn it turn this around. <laughs> Jesus Christ! <laughs> yeah, what well, is that? Obviously, a parody account, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. I do hope Liam so. good enough. Is that what it is? Let's have a look, see if he follows me. What's it called? Fucking <laughs> <laughs> game. Here. He's got another video. Yeah, uh, you, you might find that name on the on, on the criminal central criminal record uh, website as well. Allegedly. Oh, Liam he's good got the enough, troops. Yeah. yeah, he's got the troops video here, and he goes, "A blood, a fam, a blood, three more fams, a couple of bloods, and a <laughs> sprinkling of fam bloods." <laughs> have you, I've, have got you right, I've not got the right account. How are you spelling it? It's, it's uh, Liam it's, good yes. enough. And Liam underscore good enough. Oh, yeah. okay. L I A M underscore. Go Do you know the other one that's had me creased? The other one that's had me creased this week when we lost to Watford, and there's that kid, and he's going, Oh, go get relegated, you pricks. And then he's got David Brent going, You're odd. Oh, you're odd. Yeah. <laughs> yeah <that's laughs> I, I love the one that Steve tweeted the other day with the Tottenham fan. On the way to White Hart Lane, couple of drinks, lovely job. Oh, that's that's fucking brilliant. He's putting that voice on though, isn't he? he yeah, I, I, I don't think, I reckon he's I like he's playing some sort of character like yeah. uh, Tim Either Nice that, to escape from yeah. the Rickworth Asylum. Either that or he has learning difficulties, one of the two. I mean he have supports you, Spurs, so probably both. Yeah, um, have both. you have you seen the one where he's singing in the stand? Yeah. That's <laughs> fucking he just it's when got, you he's, think he's they can't sink joke. any lower, they I love did, you, Eric Dyer. <laughs> it's fucking hilarious. Isn't he just making the noises rather than I love Eric Dyer and Eric Dyer loves me. What's your name? Fucking Daddy Alley. <laughs> <laughs> what is it? He says at one point, he's like, he's like, engage. We have to engage or something like that. It's, oh, it's just so criminally creaseable. Oh, God. Cringe. Yeah, that, that is that was one of your most best finds ever. That's terrible grammar, but you know have what I mean. To. Yeah, you know, it wasn't me that found it. I nicked it off the Black Scarf account that they yes. had it, but uh, it's <coughs> hilarious. Anyway, go on, I'm off. I feel, I'm, you know what, talking about pizza, I might have cheese on toast. Oh, look at you, <laughs> hey, splashing out. I'm going to splash out on cheese on toast. I've not even got a tomato in the fucking house. What are we going to do? Not you, can't, you can't have tomato. Not have tomato or fucking cheese on toast. You've got to have Worcester sauce in it. What's the matter with you? No, nah, I don't like Worcester sauce. I'll have a little no, bit of Worcester, yeah, not Worcester. Yeah, I know, I know. Have Marmite on it. Now you're talking. No, I don't like Marmite. No you... good. Oh, no good. All right, get it out, Danny, and I shall right. blast it out. We'll see how we get yeah. on. God bless you, boys. Cheers, Jeff. Cheers, Jeff. Cheers, Jeff. See you in a couple Jeff. of weeks. Bye-bye. See you later.